Welcome to the channel, my friends, and welcome to another Warhammer 40,000 ITC Battle Report. Today, my friends, we have 2,000 points of chaos facing off against 2,000 points of uh, the dreaded Tau. So we're going to be going over the armies here real quick. And again, we are playing the new ITC missions. And now let's dive right into the army. So as far as my army structure goes, I do have a Nurgle battalion here. So it is going to be two prox uh, pox bringers right here, three groups of Nurglings to fill out the troop battalion, because for chaos, Nurglings are probably honestly the best troop choice. Extremely cost effective, great for character screening. You know, you can hide them in buildings. They really bring a lot to the table here for uh, Chaos. And normally Chaos has pretty terrible troops. You have, uh, you know, Chaos Space Marines, you have Cultists. Sometimes some of the niche ones like the Cult Marines, like Rubrics can be okay and things like that. But for the most part, it is tough to find good troops uh, among these heretics. Now, two Plague Burst Crawlers, uh, we usually do go with three, but my army got a little bit expensive elsewhere. So we are forced to go with two today. So we are gonna have two Crawlers here in the back and that is gonna be filling out our Nurgle Battalion. Now, uh, by popular demand, we actually had a poll here on the channel, and you guys wanted to see the Emperor's Children. So uh, my main kind of punch in my army is going to be Emperor's Children. So it is a battalion, so our army is going to be double battalion structure. We have two groups of uh, Chaos Cultists down here who are going to be filling out the troop slots. And then one group, we'll get you guys a little bit of a close-up here, of ten of the Noise Marines. So they are uh, two of them are armed with the Blast Masters, which are the heavy-duty ones, and the rest of these guys basically just have Sonic Blasters. And they're pretty good. They ignore cover, really good at clearing out like shield drones and things like that. Very squishy, but what's cool about them is that actually when they get taken out, they can shoot when they die. So certainly get their uh, money's worth most of the time. Now we do also have a group of obliterators. These guys have gotten a point drop recently. So there are three of the obliterators here and they are the Mark of Slanesh. So those bad boys are going to be shooting twice. Granted, uh, you know, the Tau army here does have a lot of shield drones. So I certainly need to chew through those guys before I try and focus down the big targets here with the Oblitz. Now for the HQ slots here for the uh, Emperor's Children Detachment, I do have a Demon Prince of Slanesh and then a Dark Apostle as well. The Dark Apostle, I am going to be paying an extra CP for the Relic of the Remnant of Maravilla, which at the beginning of the battle round I can activate, hence giving a reroll to all wounds for a nearby Emperor's Children unit. So basically I do that with the Oblitz or the Noise Marines depending on the circumstances. Now of course it wouldn't be a true competitive Chaos Army without the uh, yeah, 1,000 Suns, or 1K Suns, so 1,000 Suns Supreme Command Detachment. So in the back, I do have a Demon Prince of Zeech. He's uh, relatively new to the army. I just finished painting him up, and uh, he was an eBay rescue, so poor little guy. He had a pretty wretched paint job, but we managed to salvage him okay. We have Armin on a Disc of Zeech and a Terminator Sorcerer as well. Now, the Demon Prince is going to be my Warlord. He is going to have the Cult of Magic Warlord trait, which is the Devastating Sorcerer. So basically, he gets plus one damage to all of his mortal wound effects, uh, a lot like Smites and Doom Bolts and things like that. It's quite strong. Armin, of course, gets the plus one to cast naturally for being a, you know, mini Magnus. And then here, of course, we do also have the Terminator Sorcerer, who's going to have plus one to cast. And also, I'm paying one CP with the new Psychic Awakening trait to give the Terminator Sorcerer plus one to cast uh, with a High Magister Warlord trait. So basically, you can have two of these traits, which is really, really nice. So we have two of those bad boys. And that is going to be it as far as the army goes. So again, in summary, two battalions, one Supreme Command. The Warlord is the Demon Prince. A second Warlord is the Terminator Sorcerer. We're also paying one CP for the Remnant of Maravilla. Forgot to mention also that the Emperor's Children are going to be getting a little bit of help here from some bikers. Uh, they're not painted as Emperor's Children. My apologies. They're uh, from my Alpha Legion force. But basically, three bikers are going to be coming in to fill out my army. So that is the army, guys. And now we're going to be jumping on over to the Tau and taking a look at uh, their Riptides. Hey guys, we're going to be taking a quick look at my Psychic spells as well. So the Terminator Sorcerer is going to be more of my support character. He has Prescience and Warp Time. The, uh, the Demon Prince is going to be rocking Gaze of Fate and Infernal Gaze to get a little bit of extra DPS in conjunction with the Smite. Armin is rocking Doombolt, Zeech is Firestorm, and he also has Warp Time as his third spell. And then for my Nurgle casters, I do have the Miasma Pestilence on the lighter green one, and then the darker green one is going to be rocking the uh, Fleshy Abundance to heal up my tanks. And that's pretty much it. All right, guys, see you in the game. Okay, so... My army today will be Tau, obviously, as you can see. I got uh, three detachments. I got an Outrider detachment, a Supreme Command detachment, and a Vanguard detachment. So my Warlord will be this guy. As you can see, he has no weapons. He's basically just a slave for the broadsides. <laughs> so what does he do exactly? So basically, uh, he has this, uh, there's this stratagem that allows uh, one unit within six to reroll wounds hmm. if the commander uh, does not shoot. So basically, I never equip him uh, with any weapons. Copy that. Uh, he's got the three unity devastation warlord trait. Uh, he's accompanied by two shield drones, and he's got the pure tide engram neuro chip, which allows me to regain a command point on a roll of six. Um, then we have a supreme command detachment with three cadre fire blades. All three are accompanied by two shield drones. We have an ethereal, also accompanied by two shield drones. Then we have a Crisis Commander with four Missile Pods, also accompanied by two Shield Drones. 
You have three missile sites, uh, three riptides with heavy burst cannons and smart missile systems. And then we have three units of uh, seven shield drones. So it is a shield drone fest. Uh, Very nice. In total, how many do you have? I have 33 shield drones, of which 12 are in two-man units. So this is kind of a new yeah. play style I'm testing out. Uh, they should be annoying, but we'll see. Oh, I forgot. I also have three <laughs> uh, Firesight uh, Marksmen for some sweet marker light support. And I'm also trying out the new uh, custom sets from Psychic Awakening. Mm. So the traits I picked for this battle are um, Hardened Warheads, which gives me plus one AP on all missiles. So that's all the smart missile systems. Well, that's really good. Yeah, actually, both yeah. on uh, Solid. broadsides and riptides, and also the heavy yield uh, pods on the broadsides. So all your SMS are going to be having an minus extra... Minus two, yeah. And, and they're normally minus one, right? They're normally minus one, yeah. Because I also paid for the advanced targeting system. That's going to be really good against like my Oblitz and you know, my Marines yeah, and things I like mean, that. Yeah. That's really yeah. good. So, uh, yeah, so hopefully that'll, that'll turn out well for me. And the other trait allows all my battle suits to move and shoot with no penalty uh, with their heavy weapons. So that allows me to take other uh, support systems on the suits that I would uh, normally not take because I would have to give them a target lock. So, for example, my Riptides all have Velocity Tracker, which mm. gives them an extra plus one to hit against flyers. Not really useful. Yeah, but my you, but demon princes, for example, yeah, if you look over here, I have right. two princes, so but you can uh, get some value there. Yeah, that, that's pretty cool because uh, I don't have to pay for the uh, target lock. So I don't know. Uh, this is my third game with the new rules, uh, so we'll see how it goes. Right on, man. Well, thank you for the breakdown. Certainly going to be fun seeing the forces of chaos face off against the dreaded Tau. I also forgot to mention, guys, I do have a chaos rhino which the Noise Marines shall be riding. And so again, we are playing the new ITC rules. So we're going to get the battlefield set up here, and then we'll be back with deployment and all that good stuff starting soon. Cheers. All right, guys, and now we're back. Let's go ahead and take a look at the scenario. So we are going to be doing ITC scenario number three. My score is going to be on the left-hand column here, and Ismail's is going to be on the right. Now, how ITC works for anyone who's new again to the format is basically at the end of each battle round or turn, at the end of the turn, you get a point for killing one thing, and you get a point for holding one objective. Now, if you, at the end of the battle round, kill more than your opponent, you get an additional point, and if you hold more, you then get an additional point as well. Each mission does also have a bonus. The bonus is going to be dictated by this little, nice little bonus box up here in the top right. And for this particular mission, the bonus is actually to hold both objectives, which are outside of the player deployment zone. So... I'll show you guys the battlefield here in uh, just a second. You guys will get a bit of a picture for that. Now on ITC, you also pick secondary, so you don't have to worry about stupid Maelstrom cards. Basically, you just uh, look at your opponent's army. You have an option of different missions you can pick to uh, cater to your opponent's force, and you get to kind of develop your own game. So for me, I've taken the MFD, which is marked for death, and basically I'm going to get a point if I either kill his uh, Riptides or his Broadsides. I basically, you pick four units that cost more than 100 points, and uh, you're allowed to get a point for taking them out. So I've marked for death his Riptides, all three of them, plus the broadsides. We take Recon as well. Recon gives us a point for having a unit in each table quarter. And of course, with the new uh, ITC rules, if you have two units in each table quarter, you actually get uh, two points, which is a really, really strong push. So that's my Recon. We also have Old School as well. Old School, you uh, it's a pretty diverse one. You get one for killing their Warlord, one for killing a unit on the first turn, one for killing a unit in the last turn, and one for having a unit in your opponent's deployment zone uh, at the end of the game, which is called Line Breaker. Uh, Ismail's done pretty much the same thing. He's taken Mark for Death on my Blitz, Noise Marines on my two tanks. He's taken Recon, and he's also taken King of the Hill, which means he needs to have units within the uh, center of the board, kind of uh, just kind of holding that presence there, which is quite cool. So now, guys, we'll be back in just a moment. That is the kind of generic mission, and I'll show you guys the battlefield, and then we'll get started from there. All right, my friends, here is the battlefield. It is, again, a ruined Chaos City, but this time it is in the desert, and I've made a little bit more of an effort to kind of decorate a little bit. So you can see there's some pipes in the buildings. There's some... Uh, Toxic Vats, I'm sure the Death Guard would be proud of that, but basically you can see it's pretty symmetrical. We have a magic box on the far side. The Tau army is getting ready to uh, deploy here. And on my side, we have this box as well. So basically, uh, he's gonna be doing, uh, starting on that side of the battlefield. So we are doing a standard Dawn of War deployment. And uh, yeah, this is pretty much it. So hopefully you guys kind of get the picture here. Uh, of course, these are gonna be buildings that you can go inside. So these are what's called the magic boxes in ITC, as are the buildings on the far side. Uh, very good line of sight blocking against missile play, which opens up different play styles. Yeah, that's pretty much the whole battlefield. You guys can kind of get a picture of it here. We'll just do one last pan, and you guys can see. We are doing, like I said, Dawn of War deployment, which basically from each table edge, you go up 12 inches and then just draw a line straight across the board. And of course, you guys will see that once we get started. So guys, let's get this uh, show on the road and have some fun. All right, guys, deployment is completed, and the Tau have actually won the roll off to go first. So on the new ITC missions, it's uh, actually quite nice. So basically, 
The individual who wins the roll-off, the initial roll-off, can choose to be the attacker or defender. The attacker then gets to go first. There's no more seizing in ITC, which is great because seizing is kind of a stupid mechanic in my opinion. But nonetheless, uh, the Tau have elected to go first. And what that means is that the Tau have to basically uh, deploy their entire army first. And then I get to counter deploy. So even if you go second, you then get to completely counter deploy your opponent, which I think is quite nice. So if we take a look at the Tau here uh, and objectives, let's look at those firstly. So there's one objective over here. That is the objective outside of his deployment zone. Uh, his main objective, I think, for his army is actually, is it inside this building? Yes, Mel? What's is your that? other objective inside this building here? No, it's right here, sorry. Oh, no worries. That guy's just squatting on it, basically. So basically, yeah, there's one of his uh, Tau characters there kind of squatting on that objective. So there's one there. There's one there on that part of the battlefield. And then if you look behind the piping right there, you can see that little beige objective where all my characters are kind of hanging out and uh, just kind of camping on it. And then right over the building right here, there's another objective that my Nurglings are holding from within uh, the building, which is definitely quite nice. So for the Tau, uh, they've really taken up refuge on this side of the battlefield. You can see they have their two Riptides here, their broadsides, all the drones masterfully hidden behind the boxes. So basically I have to shoot the big armor targets, which he then basically just passes off over to his uh, Riptides and things like that, which is uh, quite good. More drones in the building, obviously, within uh, the support range here of the Riptides. However, he has kind of yielded this objective, not wanting to kind of overextend, which yeah, we'll see how it pays out. It's a bold strategy, Cotton, but it could certainly work out. So that is it for his deployment. Now, as far as my deployment goes, uh, the units that are on top of the buildings here, these Nurglings, they're actually, for the sake of the game, on the bottom, but I'm just gonna put them up top so you guys know they're in there, but they are on the bottom floor. And Nurglings actually have a really funny uh, characteristic in that they're a swarm unit. They're not an infantry unit, which means they can't leave buildings, which is quite hilarious, unless it has like a door, but these are enclosed buildings, so they basically can't bust through the walls because they're too little and uh, too small. Over here, I do have some cultists up here in the, bu in the building with some Nurglings, as well as one of my Poxbringers holding my uh, back objective there. And I've kind of hidden one of the Plague Burst Crawlers out around the flank. Since I'm going second, I'm trying to minimize. And if you look here, the Riptides are gonna have some trouble drawing line of sight, as will the broad, uh, Broadsides. I almost said Broadtides, that's pretty funny. Over here, we do of course have the uh, other Plague Burst Crawler, a little bit away from the danger, hoping he'll survive. Here, one Poxbringer, but he's screened out with Nurgling since he has a character. And now the big goon squad in the back. So we have our Terminator Sorcerer here, we have our Demon Prince, we have our Dark Apostle. The Rhino's actually in the ruins here uh, with the Noise Marines inside of it. So basically they're gonna try and disembark. And the other Poxbringer is uh, being used as a malignant playcaster because I can't find the other one. It's just, he's, he's misplaced somewhere. Now, as far as my elite, oh no, there he is. He's in front of the building. Okay, so yeah. Okay, totally, totally lost that model. We'll remove the playcaster. But uh, as far as the rest of my army goes, so yeah, Noise Marines are in the Rhino, Obliterators are in Deep Strike. And let's give you guys one more big kind of pan of the battlefield once again from both perspectives. Here's the tower right here lined up on their battle lines. Nurglings are screening in the center building right here. And if we look here, Plague Burst Crawler, I have my bikes back here, getting ready to zoom up the battlefield, potentially grab that objective for a bonus point. And uh, Rhino's back here with the Demon Prince of Sanesh. Armin's back here as well. Uh, my uh, Peacock Demon Prince here, the Zinch Prince is hiding behind the building with all those guys screening for him. That's pretty much it, guys. So the bonus, like I said, is gonna be achieved if someone holds that objective here, as well as this objective here. So uh, that's something I'm gonna be trying to do and we'll see how it goes. Again, tower going first. And now guys, we'll be back with the uh, movement for the tower and then uh, shooting, which is always a good time against Tau. All right guys, see you in a second. All right guys, so the tower movement is completed. Not too much going on. Basically, it looks like Ismail is basically uh, just trying to get the king of the hill. So he's advanced some drones up out of cover here, but they're pretty well hidden behind this building as well. Of course, the building does go two ways in terms of providing cover. So these two drones are gonna be going up. They are within nine inches of the center of the board. So they're just going to be getting King of the Hill points, which is uh, definitely quite safe. I don't have too much out of line of sight shooting aside from the mortars on my Plague Burst Crawlers, which is not something I'm going to be focusing on too much. Over here, the drones have stayed put. You can see here the, uh, the big old Riptide has actually fallen back, and he's still within range of my uh, Plague Burst Crawler. Of course, he has 36 inch range, and Dawn of War is a pretty short kind of a battlefield deployment. So he's going to be shooting downtown, currently yielding this objective. But again, if he does go for it, it puts him in a range of smites and all sorts of other nasty stuff. So I do agree with his assessment. I think that's a good play. Uh, as far as other abilities go, the other Riptide up here is kind of hanging out. These drones have advanced. And a lot of you guys are probably wondering why. And it's actually a really good play. He advanced up here because I have a ton of smites behind the building. I have Armin in the building and my Prince is behind the building. And smite phase, or the psychic phase, as that is actually called, is before the uh, shooting phase. So basically I'm gonna have to use my smites to kill these drones, which I really was hoping he'd have the drones behind the Riptide. And then I could basically smite it down and get a ton of free value and just cackle and you know do all that evil chaos stuff. But uh, aside from that, he has activated Cal Yun to get all those juicy, juicy buffs. And what does that do exactly? Could you? Basically I reroll all uh, hits. So you updated it. Is it it's, so it's not wounds too? 
No, no, no. Wounds is a stratagem that I use in the shooting phase, which I will probably use. Okay. So he gets to reroll all his hits, which is quite nice. And that is something you can do once or twice per game. Uh, once. If you take Shadow Sun, uh, she allows you to do it twice, but uh, I don't have her, so it's just once. Just it's once. A Master of War ability. So I could either do uh, that, that uh, grants me reroll hits, or I can Monka, which allows me to advance and shoot as if I remain stationary. It's pretty cool. Excellent. On top of that, he has activated Sense of Stone. So pretty much the units in this little bubble here are going to be getting a 6-up Feel No Pain against both my Mortal Wounds as well as regular wounds, so definitely some very juicy stuff. So that is pretty much it, guys. Forgot to mention earlier, as far as command points, the Tau Army is wielding the Mighty 6 in me after spending 1 on High Magister as well as the Extra Relic for the uh, forces of the, uh, the Emperor's Children. I'm wielding 12. All right, guys, we'll be back in the shooting phase in just a second. Okay, so at the beginning of the shooting phase, I'm going to go ahead and spend a command point. No. So down to five, and <laughs> at the broadsides, uh, reroll all wounds. So the broadsides, of course, are these uh, these Gundam-looking so, creatures here. Uh, let's see if I get the command point back on six. So and what is causing that to happen? Uh, that's the um, relic on my Warlord. It's called Pure Tide Angram Neurochip. Copy that. So on a six up, I regain command point. So he did not get that yeah, on a three. And that never works. Hey, one and six isn't bad. Rough. So now, what are you going to be opening up so, with in the uh, shooting phase? First of all, this dude here, the cadre, is going to shoot a marker light into your tank over there. It's my disgusting tank. I love it. Your disgusting tank. And this hits. And he he moves, so he hits on threes. Okay, so that tank uh, is going to have one marker light. One marker light on the tank. So I'll just, we'll just remember. I will place this. You can put like the yellow. Yellow dice inside of his like tentacle morass there. Exactly. Uh, okay, so I'll go ahead and start shooting with this group type. And he did Nova Charge earlier, taking a mortal wound. Yep. So he is currently going to be getting six additional shots, putting him up to 18. And what are you going to be targeting? I assume yes. the tank back here. Yes, so he's going to be targeting the tank with the heavy burst cannon, while his SMS shots will go into uh, these three nerf wounds. Sounds good. So let's start with the heavy burst cannon. So when you roll here, just try and roll it a little bit tight together where you can. And guys, we're trying to use dice today that are a little bit easier. It's something we learned from the first battle report. So just kind of roll down in this area and we'll be good to go. Yeah, mine also match mine. So this is 18 shots at strength 6, yep. so minus 2. Minus 2, uh, 2 damage. Two so damage. It's, I'm going to be hitting on 4s and re-rolling 1s because of the marker right. Very good. All right, let's do it. Rolling ones. That was a perfect dice roll, by the way, right right in the good angle for the camera. Nice. Solid work, man. So this there is one three in there. One. There's one three in there still. No worries. Okay, so I'll be wounding on five. Yes, yeah, strength six is... against toughness eight. Yeah, we'll so this is the hard part for you, boss. Let's do it. Fives. Well, I got a couple there. Four, actually. Four in total? Yep. Great, if you want to just hand those to me, the four succeeds, and I'll roll my saves. So this is minus two against my three-up armor, putting me up to a five-up save, and I fail them all. So That's two, eight damage. so it's eight damage in total. However, my Nurgle character does have disgustingly resilient. So on a five-up, I ignore these, and I make uh, four of them. There you go. See, so it comes through in the end. So in total, I take three after all is said and done. So uh, my tank here will put a marker on him, and he is going to take... I, I think you could... Is it four in total? Yeah, so okay. it's going to be uh, eight damage. Oh, because it's... Two. Oh, no, no, sorry, because you're... Yeah, that was yeah, my yeah, disgusting yeah, so resilient. Four, yeah, so I take perfect. four. Okay, cool. Perfect. So we got that right. No worries, brother. So uh, four puts me down from 12 to eight. And uh, not bad. Pretty good shooting. And now what is next, my friend? Uh, the SMS on those uh, disgusting... No, leave them be. They're just happy little dudes. RG nerd <laughs> Just having, having a good old orgy here in the building. Always a good time. So these are going to on fours. No marker light, so. The average. And when you're on three. Oh, uh, twos, because they're only toughness two. So it's going to be three. So this is a one damage weapon, correct? One damage minus two. So five up. Three not. And I ignore one. And then for the other two here, this is the disgusting resilient. I take one in total. Classic nerglings. So, so one of these guys will take a wound. And now what would you like to shoot next, brother? So next will be uh, this Riptide, who is going to shoot his SMS weapons into the same uh, Nurgling. Yeah, I got to get that consistency. And, uh, heavy burst cannon, unfortunately. 
We've managed to hide pretty Absolutely, well. Absolutely, The burst cannon cannot see this tank, nor can it see the very treacherous tank hiding behind the building. But he does get reroll hits because... The Kalyan. Um, he has not moved, and he's within range of the Kalyan. Very, very good stuff. So it's good to be hitting on fours, rerolling. Looks good so far. Oh, and they all hit. Scary stuff. Uh, Controversial. <laughs> so it's going to be seven. So this is the SMS system. So I get a five up invuln save and then a five up feel no pain. Derglings are notoriously tough to kill. Oh, and I make a bunch of them. Oh my God. Made all but two. So two, two of them go through and then this is the feel no pain. So he does end up taking those two. So this Nurgling is now down from his uh, three remaining to one remaining. Each base has four wounds in total. Okay, nice. Uh, let's see. Now the broad, he's checking line of sight to see if the broadsides can see the tank. No, I'm, I'm checking for um, these guys. Oh, uh, yes. They really cannot see much. So he is going to shoot his heavy weapons into the tank. The uh, riptide up top? Yep. So this the riptide? Only thing that we can yeah, it's the only thing. I've, I've hidden pretty yes. well here. The SMS will Got this go guy. into the same Nurgling squadron. Session. Copy that. SMS into the Nurglings and oh. heavy burst. And he Nova charged as well, correct? Uh, yeah. So he's 18 shots. So let's do the SMS first. You know, four. He's a popular guy. You're rolling. No worries. You can go ahead and take that, brother. And, oh. All right, guys. And so now we're back. So these are the hits for the uh, SMS systems. And they were going into the Nurglings here. So go ahead let's and see. do the wounds, which is just two. Ups. Wow. Eight. It's, they almost always win on Come on, just be good. Don't roll like you did before. You ready for this? Yeah. So here is the five ups. So we make two of those, and then the rest are one damage apiece. Got one damage yet. And we make one, two, three. So we take three damage. One Nurgling will uh, plop over and, and keel, and then in total there's two more wounds. So this Nurgling base is down to two. Very durable little creatures. Nurgle makes them tough. Made in uh, the Plague Gardens, and now... What's, so the shots left to shoot. Yeah, the burst cans, right? Burst cans. So eight, ten. So we have eighteen whopping heavy tau shots coming in. Getting a little bit scary here. Are the tau going to get a kill in the first round? Hey, on four is rerolling everything. He gets to reroll everything because of the cow yun. Some uh, some kung fu magic going on over there. And now this is the hard part. Wounding here on the plague burst crawler. He needs fives. Come on, tau. They can do nice. it. I believe. Pretty good, actually. Let's see. We got a few. Yep. There you go. Looking very good. So I get a five up invuln on this because they are minus two AP. And I make one, two, three, and then this was a six up here. Yep. So in total, six. Uh, these go through. So that is going to be six damage here. So let's go ahead and uh, roll the field no pains. And I make one. So that tank actually ends up taking five in the end. Very, very good shooting. We'll go ahead and get the marker here. He is down to seven wounds from his 12. And what else do you have to shoot, brother? Uh, the broadsides. Broadsides are gonna be unleashing a salvo of fire. And we'll uh, take just a moment to see what they can shoot. All right, guys, so we're back at the end of the shooting phase. The last of the firepower from the Tau is gonna be the dreaded uh, broadsides here. And they're gonna be unleashing, unfortunately, they can't really see too much. They're gonna put all their smart missile systems into the uh, remaining Nurglings here, trying to ensure that the Tau do get a first turn kill. And it also gets rid of part of my screen and my center objective holding. So let's go ahead and get this show on the road. Hitting on uh, threes? Uh, fours. Fours? Oh yeah, that's right. Tal hit on everything with fours, right? Yep. But you get to re-roll everything here. This should finish off the Nurglings, most likely, unless I just roll super hot. Or I roll super low. Yeah, that's that's a lot of misses considering the full re-roll, but again, it is a four to hit. It's Now it's a two to wound. Two to wound, yeah, they're only toughness two. And re-rolling, so... Very good. You got some rerolls there, which is nice. Okay, so this is. You want to just hand, hand that grip to me if you don't mind, brother? Yep. I'll take I'll take less dice. I'm not opposed to it. So five up here. You ready for all the five ups? Oh, oh my baby. god. Oh what do baby. What are you doing? Are the Nurglings gonna live? The most see. resilient creatures in the universe. You got another one right there. Oh, there's another five. Wow, thank you. I was about to roll that into a good honest play here for Miss Mail. So uh, now we have another five up, which is the feel no pain, and one. Two. Okay. So that will actually wipe the squad. Uh -huh. the, the proud Nurglings fall to the firepower of the Tau, and this whole squad yeah, is going to. Honestly, it's embarrassing that my whole army <laughs> was able to kill a Nurgle <laughs> orgy fest hidden in the building. Well, there's more too for next turn. So, in case you're not satisfied, so there's more, more orgies. In yeah, there. there's more to take care of in the building. So, is there any more shooting? Uh, no, actually. No. So, there's no more shooting. Tau obviously are not going to be assaulting here. It doesn't look like they want to get too aggressive. Now, uh, as far as your kills, you did get a kill for the turn, which is good. Wow. And your secondaries, you do get King of the Hill, correct? 
I get King of the Hill, yes. Because you can see he does have the King of the Hill here. So we'll be back uh, with the Chaos movement done, going to the Psychic phase. Of course, Tau don't really have a Psychic phase, but you got King of the Hill, you got a kill, and your other secondaries were Recon, which you did not achieve this turn. Nope. And then your other one was, what was your last secondary, do you recall? Uh, I think it was Mark for Death. Okay, so Mark for Death. the tanks. The tanks. And the Obliterators. So some progress has been put in. He's and done some. Rates. You've done some damage to the tanks, so that's a good start. Uh, certainly, we're buttering them up for later. And now, guys, we'll be back with chaos movement and uh, the end of turn one. All right, guys, movement is completed for chaos in turn one. So let's go ahead and take a look. So the noise marines, of course, with their three-inch disembark and their six-inch move, were able to move up out of the building. Of course, the rhino did have to advance around the back to escape here. But the noise marines are now in range, and they have their 24-inch range. They can draw a line of sight here on the broadsides. Uh, they can shoot the drones, they have a couple other targets, and of course the two Blastmasters in the back, if you guys take a look here at the uh, Noise Marines in the back, those guys have 48 inch range with those huge guns. Now as far as everything else goes, this uh, tank has kind of sallied forth, characters in the building are just kind of hanging out, still holding that objective, and my Psychers have gotten into 24 inch range to start smiting and doing some Psychic Witchcraft here to the Tau army, which of course Tau loves. As far as the troops in the building goes, my Dark Apostle has advanced out within six inches of the Noise Marines. At the beginning of the battle round, I don't know if I said it on camera, but I did off camera, we declared the uh, Remnant of Maravilla has been broadcasted. So all of the Emperor's Children units within six inches of him get to reroll their wounds. So that means this turn only, my Noise Marines get to reroll all failed wounds, which is pretty sexy for sure. They can, uh, they can get some damage out there. The Emperor's Children, Demon Prince has advanced up. Uh, he's gonna be casting Delight Flag and he's on those guys. And, Poxbringer has basically just hung out as well. I think I forgot to move him, so we'll move him in a second. And the other Poxbringer has moved up behind the tank to cast Miasma Pestilence on it, and hopefully we can make it a little bit tougher to kill. The other tank on the far side has moved up, and my bikes, which were hidden back there, they auto advance six. So these guys were able to get up and get the objective. So this turn, I currently will be getting the bonus by holding both objectives outside of the player deployment zone. So I hold this one, and on the other side, I am holding that one as well, which is quite good. So that's pretty much it for the movement, guys. Of course, the obliterators are still in reserve until next turn, most likely. And now we're going to go straight into the psychic phase, and we'll see you guys in just a sec. All right, guys, and so now we're back in the psychic phase for chaos. The witchcraft begins. And firstly, we're actually going to start off with the warp time from the sorcerer here, and he's going to be casting warp time, or the terminator sorcerer, onto the rhino. Basically, I just want to send the rhino up and get it like as an additional screen, and I couldn't quite get there as is. So he's going to be casting Warp Time on the Rhino. He gets plus two to cast, one for the Familiar and one for having the High Magister Warlord trait. So this actually goes off on a four. Oh, God. Don't make me CP this early. Do so, that. Do it. CP. Do it. I'm going to... Hmm, that, it's not super necessary, but it's like something I wanted. I have another stratagem which can ignore perils, but my CP is pretty in, important here in this list. Granted, you know what? Do it. <laughs> do it. You, you want me to. Chaos wants you to do it. Chaos wants me to do it, huh? Well, you know what? We're going to do it. I'm down to 11 CP, so I just need a two up here. Oh, one into a one. The curse of 40K. The curse of chaos. Let's see if, if I get the command yeah. point back. No. And he does not. That would have been really unfair if I got it. So next, back. we're going to cast Prescience on the Noise Brains with the Terminator Sorcerer needing a six. The familiar is only for the first spell. And there we go. It goes off, but I take a perils. Pretty nice bad. rolling, man. Now, nice. I could actually pay one CP to ignore this, but I don't really care. So we're going to take it. Uh, we take the whopping three. <laughs> God, the worst. So he has two wounds left, but it does go off. So now the tank is going to move up 12. Uh, I'll measure a little bit more carefully here, but we're going to measure this and move it, and I'll be right back. Sorry about that, guys. I actually got warp time impressions confused, but nonetheless, the noise marines now have plus one to hit. Uh, the, the sorcerer paid dearly for it, but plus one to hit is pretty good. So now they'll be hitting on twos. Now, he is done casting. Uh, the failure has uh, paid his dues. And now we're going to go over to the Zinch Demon Prince, who is going to actually go after one of his characters in the back. So this, uh, this what's the name of the character holding the spear there? Uh, Rob. Rob? Nah, just kidding. It's Rob? He's just an ethereal. It's an ethereal. Okay. So uh, we have some sniping. This guy does have the devastating sorcery warlord trait, so all of his spells do plus one. Uh, so plus one damage, basically. So we're going to go with him firstly, and we're going to, and he also has the uh, relic, the arcane focus, to give him a plus one to the... Uh, plus one to his uh, his psychic spells. So we're gonna cast Infernal Gaze onto the uh, Ethereal there. We're in the 24 inch range, and this will go off on a four. This is from the Prince? From the Demon Prince. So that is uh, a 10. So basically with this one, I roll, sorry, I roll three dice, and each four up is a mortal wound. So it's two mortal wounds plus one from Devastating Sorcery, so three mortal wounds in total to the Ethereal. So he has a six up uh, Feel No Pain from his- Six up Feel No Pain from sense the Sense of Stone. Of stone. So he takes three. He takes three. 
Jesus, let me check. I, I, I really hope he's still alive. I'm pretty sure he has four, but uh, let's go ahead and put three on him. Let me check. Double no check. problem. We'll double check that. And uh, in the meantime, I'll prepare my next psychic spell. We're going to be doing the... Uh, do we want to do Gaze of Fate? I wanted to kind of do more smiting action. Let's see. So my Demon Prince's other spell is Infernal Gaze and Gaze of Fate. He does also have Astral Blast from the Cult of Magic, but I'm out of range for that. Yeah, he has four. So he's, no he problem. has one left. So next, the Zeech Prince is going to smite into the drones here. And he gets a super smite with the plus one from his uh, yeah. arcane focus. So damage is going to be d6 plus one. Seven mortal wounds to those drones. Brutal psychic power coming in from the Thousand Suns. Three. And now comes the Feel No Pain on the drones. They have a five up Feel No Pain, correct? Yep. So they actually only lose uh, three. So only three of the drones die. He did pass four of those. This is vengeance for my uh, Feel No Pain's last turn. Yep, definitely vengeance. So now Armin is going to attempt to snipe your Ethereal. He is going to do the uh, uh, Zinch's Firestorm. So Zinch's Firestorm goes off on a 7, but in this case it'll be uh, a 6 with a plus 1. And uh, that does not go off. That is actually just a natural 6. So next Armin is going to cast uh, Doom Bolt on that same character. So we're going to try and snipe that character extra hard. So here comes the Doom Bolt. And Doom Bolt on a 5, 6, and a 7. And Doom Bolt goes off on a pretty high roll on a nine, so that does not go off. It's okay. We will go to Armin's last spell, which I think Armin is going to smite. He's just gonna smite to the drones here. They're the closest target. Uh, but the plus one, it does go off. Thousand Suns do not suffer the modifier, so it's gonna be D3. Uh, for another three, actually, pretty good stuff. So we might just get the drones here in the psychic phase. Uh, two, two I didn't more. see the last dice, but it looks like two more drones yeah, die. Two more. Not a problem. So there's two left, and now, Armin has casted his three. The Demon Prince has casted his two. The Sorcerer has casted his two. We'll go back here for a Delightful Agonies on the Noise Marines, giving them a five up. And that does go off on a five. So now the Noise Marines have a five up, feel no pain. And they're going to be uh, quite durable. Over here, we're going to go and cast Miasma of Pestilence onto the Plague Burst Crawler, giving it minus one to hit. And that does go off on a seven. So the tank is now minus one to hit, which is quite good. Miasma of Pestilence is going to be going down right there on that bad boy. Minus to hit modifiers are notoriously good against Tau. And now if we look around, that's pretty much it for the Psychic Phase. So we were able to get some decent damage. Uh, we almost got the drones. We almost got that Ethereal, but that uh, creature did survive with one wound. So he'll be able to... Colin Creature, poor guy. <laughs> what was his name again? Rob. Rob, okay. Rob Rob survived with one wound. And now, guys, we're going to go into the uh, Chaos Shooting Phase, and things are about to get pretty loud here with these uh, Noise Marines. All right, guys, and so now we're back in the Shooting Phase. It's time to get loud, boys. We have the Emperor's Children Noise Marines, who are going to be opening up into the broadside. So all the shots are going into the broadsides. We are going to be using two CP. So I will be using one for Veterans of the Long War and one for Excruciating Frequencies. Okay. Veterans gives them plus one to wound, and then also the Excruciating Frequencies gives them plus one strength and plus one damage. That's what makes them extra loud. Let's see uh, if I get him back. Yes, does he farm CP two off die me? since yeah, two CP. he used two, no. Man, that's really not... Dude, not it, it never works. It's just not happening. Just so we're going to be using the Sonic Blasters firstly into the broadsides here, and then from there, the heavier shots will go into them using the uh, mass volume fire, the varied frequencies, which is a minus one shot. So uh, so yeah, let's party. Let's do it. So here, he's uh, prepared the dice for me, which is quite nice. See if my medium-sized hands can fit it. So with Prescience, it's going to be hitting on twos, re-rolling all shots because the Demon Prince is within six, and he gives re-rolls of ones. So basically, we're probably going to hit with everything, more or less. There's a one there. There's a one there. And uh, there's a one here. Do you see any other ones? Nope. So we hit with everything. Great. So everything hits. And now it's strength five against... Uh, toughness five. Can you grab those the rest of those dice for me, brother? Yeah, toughness five. So it's going to normally be fours. Yeah. But so with veterans, it's going to be threes. And because of the remnant of Maravilla being broadcasted by my Dark Apostle, uh, all wound rerolls are right. basically just done here. Great, so now I'm gonna gather the fails, which are ones and twos. You see any of those going on here? I'll help you out. Thank you. Great. So there's a two there, there's a one and a two here. Great, so those are all your saves onto the broadsides. Uh, no AP, but they do ignore cover, if that matters. Okay, and they do two damage, right? A flat two damage piece because of the excruciating frequencies. Apparently, the Tau don't like yeah, getting so, their heads around. Uh, let's see. Let's see. How many are there? A lot. <laughs> there is, a, it looks like a 25 or 19, yeah, I think. Yeah, there's a lot. In 19 wounds in total. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, He's trying to decide if he wants to pass them off to no, the Jones. No, I'll, I'll just take them on the broadside. So this is three ups for you here. Uh, oh, it's minus one. Oh, the broadsides have two ups. Yeah, two ups. Okay, yeah, no, it's fine. For some reason, I thought they have three ups. No, they have two ups. They're three. Oh, buddy, a lot of ones in there. Yep. One. Way to fire. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right. Seven ones rolled. All right. Now I don't feel so bad about my psychic phase. So. Uh, that how many wounds do they have a piece? Six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, uh, yeah, so three would kill one. Uh, so basically, two will die and one will take two wounds. Yes, yeah, but I still have. Uh, I feel no stone. pain. So uh, how many wounds is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, fourteen. Fourteen right? wounds. Let's see. So he's going to do his feel no pain sound, which is a six up. Yeah, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. He's going to roll his saves here. Two broadsides may fall. Most likely two, uh, because there are two additional wounds on top of the mount needed to finish him off here. So six ups. Well, that's not that bad. You made a couple. So oh, one, actually. two, three, four, five, six. That kills one, and one takes two wounds. One takes two wounds. All right. Very, very good saves there. No, we just knocked Armin off his disc here. Let's put him back on his uh, floating platform of, of Zeech. So now we have the other shots coming in from the Blast Masters. The heavy base is about to be dropped, boys. So this is a two. Uh, yeah, so one takes two wounds. One takes two wounds, correct. This is 2d6 shots. Ooh, 11 more. So five, then 10, and 11. So these ones are minus one here. So this is hitting on twos, rerolling ones. Uh, looks like all but one hit. Let's reroll that for the Demon Prince, and that it rerolls into a one, of course. Can't complain, though. that was a pretty sweet roll. And then from here, this is a uh, same thing. So it's going to be threes, rerolling all fails. So you have another 10, but these ones are the varied frequency, so they're at minus one. And uh, the damage is? Uh, two. Just okay. a flat two on these. Okay. I didn't use the heavy shot, which does D3 plus one. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I'll go ahead and... How many drones you got over there? I got two here and two under here. So you're going to pass them off. Okay. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and start passing them off on these drones. So there's two drones kind of cackling back there, so, so he's going to pass them off. Two at a time. Sounds good. So they both go off. And it's drone. two damage each. So you Yeah, but it goes to one more. Oh, it goes into one more to one. Copy that. So they so get a five up here? Yeah, so five up mm. uh, female pain on the drone. So it passes one. So one drone dies there. One drone dies. Uh, so now I gotta roam one at a time on mm. these drones. Two up to pass it, okay. Five up female pain. No, so this drone dies. Poor little guy. Uh, so now I have another two drones under another here. Another two drones, okay. So uh, we got, that gives us a kill, doesn't it? Those two drones over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. So I'll go it. ahead and, and uh, pass them on uh, onto these drones, two at a time. Okay, so uh, one goes on the drone. Let's see if the drone lives. I didn't see the roll, but you yeah, can Yeah, it's a six. So it's a six. It sounds good. Uh, the broadside takes one, so that would be two damage. But he does get a three up save. So he's good. Ooh, rock hard sixes, baby. Look at that. Uh, That's good stuff. Let's okay. get these dice for you over here. So how many more you got? Are you all done there? No, no, no. I got one, two, three, four, five more. Sounds good. Uh, which I will pass to the drones. Sure. So I'll do them pass two at a time. Two to the drones. Okay. They both go to the drones. Let's see if the drones live. They live. Oh, they live. They take the, the sonic blast like absolute champs. Uh, I'll do the same thing. Two more on the drones. Because they, they pass up over on a two up. Yep. Do they live? One lives. A two and a five, it looks like. Yeah, so one lives. So I'll take this drone away. And the last one, I'll just go ahead and save on the broadside. So it's just minus one. For a three up. Okay. And he saves that on a five. Yep. Great, so that is the first round of shooting, but you guys know Slanesh loves to party. So there's uh, most certainly going to be a second round of shooting as we do have the endless cacophony stratagem to shoot again. So on that note, uh, we will be back with the Endless Cacophony once we've uh, gathered up the dice. I advanced my crawler so it can't shoot. It's out of range. Uh, this one's out of range as well. The biker's advanced and they cannot shoot. They have rapid fire weapons, uh, not assault weapons. So there's really no other shooting aside from the Noise Marine. So guys, we'll be back with the Noise Marine Endless Cacophony round two. All right, guys, so now we're back. So two CP have been spent uh, to let the Noise Marine shoot okay. once more. Is it just, oh, so it's a stratagem that costs two CP? Two CP, yeah, so you so, get to uh, farm yeah, once with on, your- On a six. Oh, oh, and he gets a CP. Final. What a hero. 
first time in the history of Tau. Yeah, really. So all the shooting is going to go into the broadsides once again. Uh, and yeah, so as far as my CP, I go from 9 down to 7. And here we go. So this is the Sonic Blasters hitting on... Uh, hitting on twos, but re-rolling the ones. Fair amount of ones here. All right. There's some ones there. You see any other ones, my friend? Uh, nope. Those are all successes here, so we'll move those guys back. And then we miss one there. So that's going to be a fail. Another fail there. Perfect. And now, if you could hand those into my medium-sized hand, uh, this will be threes. Rerolling all fails. Way to dice. A lot of twos, too. It's a good thing we have that reroll. Now, the Remnant of Maravilla only lasts this, uh, this round. You can grab that other two for me there. And uh, yeah, put those aside if you could. And miss, miss, miss. So these are all your wounds at no AP onto the broadsides. So you're going to do any onto the drones, or are you just going balls deep with the... Uh, I'm going balls deep with the... <laughs> I love it. So just roll right in this area. So what, if any ones here, pretty sc very scary yeah. stuff. Dude, the ones are horrible. Okay, so four ones. God. That's a lot of wounds, though. So statistically, that's yeah, almost normal. Uh, let me see something. Uh, let's see. So thinking about a CP two here. Would, two would kill one. Yeah, assuming you don't make any of your feel no pains. So that's two, four, six, eight damage in total. And I still have the heavier shots coming in as well. Right, right, right. Let's see. Uh, this is one of my marks for death that targets. one, it would be six wounds uh, that I, I can only save on, on sixes. So I would make one six, and he would still die anyway. So uh, no, I, I'm not going to CP that. All right. One, so two, three, he three. now has eight wounds. And he's going to roll. Every six ignores these. He has a six up feel no pain. So let's get these dice out of the way. And he makes one six this time. So in total, he takes seven. Seven wounds. So, so this guy. that guy will take four, and the other one will take three, right. if I'm not mistaken. Uh, oh, yeah, because. Um, right. So one broadside does fall. And now we go on to the varied frequency, the high volume of shots. Let's see if we can get lucky and roll a high roll again. We get a four and a three, so we get a seven. So this is the 2d6 shots from the Blast Masters dropping that sweet dubstep in the back. And four, six, and one more. So this hits on twos. They all hit because of prescience, of course. Normally they do hit on threes, as most uh, Marines do. And this will be wounding you on, uh, on threes. You're rolling all fails. Hey, uh. So you got five at minus one. Yeah, so I'll pass them on to the single drone. So there's one drone back here, so he has to do this one at a time. Yep. So passes. Passes to him on a two up. The drone and dies. the drone dies. So now the rest go on to the lone broadside here. The drone, a valiant effort. How many do we have left? Four? Four. Uh, four so, at minus one. Yeah, so three up saves. Uh, that's two, four, six damage. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that was a sucky. That was quite sucky indeed. Uh, yeah, it's not going to matter. He's going to die anyways. Six up, so yeah, that's... So the broadsides have been eliminated. Mark for Death is accomplished. And there's pretty much not nothing else going on here for the turn. We do, of course, have to do leadership on your uh, drones here. So we'll do that in just a moment. And I'll give you guys a bit of a turn summary. I did accomplish recon by having the bikes up here, as well as the nerglings up in that kind of table quarter here. And uh, now let's go ahead and do leadership on your drones. Yeah. So their leadership is... Six. Six. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, so if you roll a one, I think they survive. Yeah. Five, so five, so they will run. So we uh, are going to be back with a turn summary and a breakdown of all the points, and then we'll be back with Tau turn two. All right, guys, breakdown of the first turn. So if we look up at the top, I did kill one, but I also killed more. I killed the broadsides and two groups of uh, drones against his one kill on the Nurgling. So I get kill one, I get kill more. I also hold more because my bikes here have this objective. I have the one behind the building and the one here. So I'm holding three objectives to his one currently. And I also got the bonus because I'm holding the two objectives outside of both of our deployment zones. I have this one and then the one behind this building right here. On top of that, I did get my old school point for uh, our killing unit in the first turn. So currently the score and the mark for death for the broadsides and of course the recon for having the table quarters. So currently it's eight to three, but again, Tau uh, are gonna get a lot of kills here. A lot of my stuff's out in the open now. The bikes, the noise marines are pretty much all gonna get flattened right now. So like uh, glorious Slanesh pancakes. So he did get a King of the Hill for having his drones within nine inches here of the center. Uh, that is quite nice. And now he's going to be aiming to get his recon, his mark for deaths, and uh, is going to be trying to uh, strike back. So guys, we'll see you in a Tau turn two. All right, guys, and now we're back with the Tau movement phase and turn two completed. The Riptides have fallen back to try and get further away from the advance of the uh, 
Emperor's children do not want to be exposed to the depraved uh, methods of those guys, that's for sure. So they've fallen back. The drones have sallied forth. So basically one of uh, Ismail's secondaries is, of course, recon. So now with the new recon, if you have two units in every table quarter, you get a recon point, which is quite cool. So he has a, a group of two drones here, a group here in this table quarter, which is pretty much mine. He has the guys over there in that one. He also has his riptide over there. And the drones, as well as this, uh, this, this crisis commander, have come up on the roof here. So they're on the top floor. So they're not on the floor. Uh, my Nurglings are on the bottom floor, but his guys are on the top. Over here, Riptide has moved up to uh, slay the bikes and potentially hold the objective, assuming my tank can't get far enough next turn. So those bikes are pretty much doomed, but they did get me a point in the beginning, which is nice. And yeah, really, the Tau have fallen back with their big guns and moved up to screen with the drones, and the forces of chaos do advance forward. Now, as far as my screening goes, I do have the tank up here as a screen, Nurglings as a screen. So even though it looks like they're out in the open, there is uh, plenty of screening for them. So we'll see if that works out. And now, uh, Sense of Stone has been activated, giving a feel-no pain to those big boys back there. He did Nova charge them to give them a million shots. And also, uh, I think that's it. So uh, we'll be back with the Tau shooting in just a moment. All right, guys, so now we're back with the Tau shooting phase. The Riptides, I assume, are going to be opening up. With the fall of the broadsides, they certainly have some ground to make up. But now, Noise Brains are one of those units you kind of just like pop out and they do their thing and then they just get nuked into oblivion and uh, that's how they roll. So, so where would you like to shoot first, brother? I'm going to spend command point. So you're back down to five. Uh, this is turn two, so let's see if I get it back on a six. No. Does not get it back. Down to 5 CP for the Tau. And so this Riptide uh, is going to reroll uh, all wounds. Oh boy. Uh, yep. Okay, so let's start with the marker lights. Sounds so good. So this dude here is going to marker light these bikes. Looks good to me. He didn't move, so on a two up. Oops, sorry about that. That's a four. It's a four. So these guys have a marker they light. Are, they are they're lit up, and now he they gets to reroll ones up. against them. Uh, this dude here we're mar we'll marker light the noise marines oh poor guys on a three up gets it very nice brother uh the second one this guy will also marker light uh the noise marines three up gets it so uh yeah finish the marker yeah. lights and then tell us what those so the do. third marker light will also target the noise marine gets it oh boy so now i'm going to spend one command point go down to four let's see if i get it back on six yep oh okay. nice so basically, instead of placing the third marker light, I'm going to be placing D3 plus one oh marker boy. light. Oh boy, okay. So let's see how many, one. Uh, so that would go up, that would bump up to uh, D3 plus one, to four marker lights. So that means you get to reroll all hits, right? No, with five, but I am going to spend uh, one additional command point. So go down to four. Go down to four. This is a new stratagem from the Psychic Awakening um, book that allows uh, to consider a unit as having one more marker light than they normally. So they're have. fully lit up. So they're fully they're lit up as shit. Those boys are like yeah. a, a slanesh Christmas tree. Yeah, exactly. It's great. So uh, I'm down to four, right? Uh, you're there... down to four, correct? Because yeah. you gain one back. Okay. So now the first riptide is going to shoot in, I would imagine, into the noise marines, and and you'll see how quickly these noise marines go. But you know, so it's a party. They love so it. So this riptide. Uh, who re-rolls uh, all wounds, will shoot his heavy burst cannon into the noise marines. Yes. And uh, his SMS will go into the... Uh, cultists here, we have Nurglings, we have the tank. All sorts of targets that he can choose from. And his SMS are minus two, which is uh, quite powerful. They are minus two. So it can yeah. actually hurt my crawlers and things yeah, like that. It's probably within 30. Yeah, it looks like you're, you're happily within range. So you're going to go for some easy kills here to probably try and get kill more at the end of this turn. So they, yeah, so his SMS will go into the... Um, to the cultists? Yeah. These poor Slanesh cultists just screaming in the building. But, uh, maybe I could kill all the noise marines with one. Might be able to. One riptide. Yeah, actually... Everything. The, everything will go into... He's just, and remember, these noise marines do have a five-up feel, no pain. Right, right, right. But the so two yeah. damage weapons will probably kill them. So. Yeah, so everything will go into the noise All right, one, let's get two, those three, rolls, brother. Four, five, six, seven, eight... Dice are being prepared. 12, 14. So Noise Marines uh, bidding adieu. We do have the Obliterators in Deep Strike still. Slanesh is ready for round right. two. I completely forgot the Obliterators. They're coming for you. God, what a stupid move there. Okay. I'm basically done next turn. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see how I roll. Yeah, I just forgot they were part of the game. Uh, so hitting on threes, rerolling ones. Correct. So he gets to reroll ones. And there's a fair amount of ones in there, but it looks like four in total. He's going to be rerolling those. And one misses from there. 
And now these are strength six against toughness four. Noise Marines are only T4. They're so not very they're tanky. Gonna, uh, wounding on threes and re-rolling. Re-rolling all the failed wounds here because of the juicy, juicy stratagem. Very good, brother. So, and then, wait, let me do the SMS as well. I'll do these first and see if it matters. Yeah. But the SMS are declared into the Noise Marines. So these are minus two, correct? Minus... Uh, on the burst cannons? Minus two, yeah. Well, yeah, I forgot the... Okay, yeah, so minus two. So I get a five up here. So one, two, three, four, five. So these, uh, I pass those. And now this gets a little bit annoying. So these are all the fails. So basically, uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what we'll do is we'll do the five up, feel no pains uh, as we go. So here's the first guy. He lives. <laughs> all right, so that's good. And then the next guy, let's grab another dice from over here. He will die, so that is one dead so far. And then we'll grab a dice from here. Another one is dead, so we've lost two so far. And then we'll grab another one from here. He is dead as well, so that is three. Get this guy here. Another one is dead, so that is four dead so far of the 10. We have three more. Five up, we pass that. And then we fail another one, so that is five. Now you guys are about to get to see a pretty cool rule, because as a matter of fact, noise marines, when they die, they get to shoot, because they have music of the apocalypse. Oh, and that one lives with two sixes. You can see that. Cool, so five die in total. So I'm gonna prepare my dice, guys. And, uh, well, we'll just do the SMS first. Yeah, we'll do yeah. it all. So the SMS are now shooting in. So in total, we've lost five noise marines so far. We'll put this little death dice near them. And the SMS is strength what? Uh, five. So, so threes. Three. So three of those do go through. And this is minus two. Minus two. Yeah. So five ups. Uh, they all die. So these are one damage a piece? Yeah. So I just roll a regular feel no pain, so I lose two more. So in total, we've lost seven noise marines. And now, guys, I'm going to prepare some dice, and it is time to hear the music of the apocalypse, because noise marines, when they die, they shoot. Pretty cool stuff, and we'll see in just a sec. So as the marines die to a salvo of burst cannon and missile fire, there are seven of them. So I'm going to be pulling seven models, which do, of course, have the blast cannons, or the uh, the blast, the sonic blasters is what they're called. And they're going to shoot all their blast shots here into the uh, drones as they die. Very cool stuff. So hitting on two still, because prescience lasts until the next psychic phase. Rerolling ones for the prince. Uh, granted, I don't have the other buffs anymore, so I don't get to, like, reroll wounds. I can't use veterans, all that kind of stuff. I reroll those, so let's pull out the ones. And that looks like it's mostly hits there. So let's kind of gather those boys here. All right, move your drone a little bit. And can you grab those and put it in my hand? Cool. <laughs> That's what she said. And, uh, sorry, I couldn't resist. And now it's going to be, what's the toughness of the drones? Four. four. So it'll be fours. A decent rolling. A couple fails, though. So if you want to pick out the fours, if you could. So the fours are successful wounds here on the drones. And now you get to roll your uh, regular save. So, yeah, a little bit less than good. So but... four ups. And then, is it still two damage? It's or... one damage now. Okay, so five ups. Oh, and so, he passes too, so only one drone dies. One drone dies. Beautiful yes. stuff, guys. And now, what would you like to shoot next? Uh, okay, so he's going to, I forgot about it, do it earlier, uh, select the Noise Marines as the target. So all units within six on a six to wound have plus one AP. Okay, sounds good. But it looks like the burst cannon. I don't know, it's You're in range. range. I mean, the SMS is still in range. Uh, okay, so what I'm gonna do is they still have that five up feeling pain. They do still have the delightful agonies, the Slanesh special. So we'll be back with just a second once we decide. Yes. All right, guys, and we're back in business, and it looks like the Riptide is gonna be shooting into the Noise Marines to finish them off. Yeah, so the Heavy Burst Cannon will go into the Noise Marines, and the SMS will go into the, um, I guess we'll go into the Cultists over there. Shooting into the Cultists in the building. I like it. Very good target. They'll just die instantly to the uh, minus two AP because they have uh, t-shirt saves, which is uh, basically a six. I'll do the SMS first. Uh, hitting on fours, not so good. Wounding on threes, so that's gonna be two cultists. So two of the cultists, uh, missiles fly through the windows and uh, just blow them up, so two cultists will die. We'll leave their, uh, their, their models here just to do leadership later in the turn. So, so the burst cannon into the... Um, the remnants of the noise marines. Yeah. Uh, we're rolling ones. They're very well lit up. These guys are uh, sparkling and glorious. A little bit of twilight action going on. 
and winning on threes, but no rerolls. Wow. Okay, so you got three, six, eight. Hand those to me. Thank you, man. Oh, I forgot. Minus uh, three, right? Yeah, no, it's minus two because I forgot to count the sixes, but I'm being punished by the greater good. <laughs> so um, these are two damage a piece, correct? Yeah. So first guy dies. It's one dead guy. Second one dies. That's two dead. And then the next guy, first feeling the pains, dies. So that's all three. That's the last of the guys. So the noise marines have been wiped out by the retaliating fire of the Tau. Uh, and now they're going to shoot upon death. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all the firepower here. Oh, God, I hate shooting into the drones. Oh, it's so depressing. I mean, I could shoot into the riptides in the back with the heavy shots. Do they have any sort of, uh, any uh, sort of uh, drones back there to support them? No. I completely forgot. To. Okay, so we'll put the two big Papa guns, the, the, the strength eight ones, into the uh, riptide on the right-hand side, on my right hand. And then we'll do the uh, blast, the little blaster into these guys. So it should be a little bit easier to do. So blaster into the drones here, hitting on twos. And then fours, no wounds. And now it's going to be 2d3 shots here against the uh, riptide back there uh, for three. And these will hit on twos because I didn't move this turn, obviously. And strength eight against toughness, seven. Yep. So threes. So two at minus two against the riptide. So that's going to be a four up save on the riptide. So one goes through. One goes through, and it's d3 damage. And they take two. Uh, six Sense of stone. Pain, pain. No. And he takes it. So he takes the damage. So the drone takes two. Not bad, Noise Marines. You guys went out like champs. Not as well as I'd hoped, but the Noise Marine squad is wiped, and we'll be back with the next shooting targets here in a moment. All right, guys, back in shooting. And what do you got next for us, brother? <laughs> that commander keeps falling over. Yeah, he, we'll leave him there. He's just he, taking he's a rest. Hard. He's, he's, he's just really tired, hard. yeah. So uh, this dude here is going to shoot. Oh, these guys already have marker light. They do oh, have yeah. marker light on them. I lit them up earlier. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, he will fire his pulse weapon carabine into these guys. Here it comes. One hit. Okay, hits on twos. Okay. Um, wounds on. So what is the strength? Five. So, so four is that one. That is wound. AP zero. AP zero. And we make it on a three up. And they're still lit up, so we'll put this here to indicate that. Great. So what's next? So the riptide will fire. His uh, heavy burst cannon into the bike. Just going deep on those boys, huh? Yep. And the SMS missiles, I guess, will go into um, those cultists back there. All right. So there are some cultists hiding in the corner. They've basically been here the whole game just to secure me recon. And uh, if he gets rid of them, it kind of forces me to throw something else. So this is the SMS. Hit on fours. And... Wow. <laughs> Okay. Oh my yeah. god, all twos and ones. He failed them all. Wow. Uh, the bikes went Brutal. Through. Now the burst cannons into the bikes. Let's go ahead and roll this right here in this nice well-lit area. And eventually, guys, Anna and I are going to be moving soon. So we'll uh, be getting a whole room to uh, get some 40k action. It'll be much nicer. Because of the marker light. There is a marker light on those bikes, so he gets to reroll the ones. And again, this is the riptide into the bikes here. And strength six, so it'll be threes to wood. Yeah. So AP? you got uh, minus two. Hiya. Uh, wow, I almost passed enough to live. But basically, uh, three or three or four of those go through, and it's two damage apiece. Bikes yeah. have two. So it's so the bikes just get flattened. They just get straight up mowed down. So good night, sweet chaos bikes. You guys can, uh, you know, enjoy life elsewhere. So what other shooting do you have? Looks. Uh, that's... Oh, wait, my commander. I forgot this guy. The, the hero of the people. What's it? He need, I think he needs a name. You got something for him? What? What are we going to call him? What's his name? So, I think I'm going to go with... Uh, get to zoom in on his epic pose up here. I don't know, like... Cletus? Jose. Jose? Like I love Jose, it. Jose. Give him a good Italian name. Okay, I'll call him uh, Mario. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. It's so it's me, Mario. It's was, me shooting. Uh, shooting. Uh, what? What am I going to shoot? I don't know. Uh, which which tank has? So this tank. Oh, that's minus one to hit. So this I'll one's minus one tank. to hit here, but this one is not buffed up currently, so you can pretty much. Yeah, I'll just shoot that tank. So it's going to be eight shots. Shots. Let's go right. Hitting on twos. Thank Ooh, God. look at that. That's like the only thing in the tower roster that doesn't hit on like an eight. Exactly. I'll hit strength seven. So fives to wound uh, three. 
And these are going to be minus two. Three at minus two against my tank. Uh, I have a five up. I fail all of them. How much damage? D3. So three D3 damage. That's going to be four. Four damage. Uh, give me one more dice if you could. Uh, five damage. Three. It was six, two, two. So five, five and five. Damage. And this is the feel no pain for this tank here. Uh, so I pass two. So the tank takes three. So he is down to five wounds. He's now bracketed. He's in a second bracket. He's still pretty strong, though. All right, guys. Uh, that's it for shooting, yeah? Yeah, that's it. So we'll be back. Uh, as far as the turn goes, he does get his recon here for having the drones here. Uh, you have his drones up in this quarter, and they're, they're past the halfway point here in this quarter edge. So uh, do you have two here? You do have two in this quarter, right? I get, I, I'm not sure the... That was, that was basically your intent, though. Yeah. Okay, so we have two back there. We have two over here. We have these drones. And so these drones and these uh, drones with the black tops here get this one. So he does get the double recon, which is really nice. Uh, he killed the bikes and the noise marines. So you get a mark for death. So a couple things went very well. So uh, guys, we'll be back with Chaos Movement in just a minute. And uh, yeah, see you soon. All right, guys, movement is completed for Chaos. And at the end of the last turn, I did actually forget to do leadership on these uh, cultists over here. So I ended up doing that and rolling a six and losing uh, quite a few more. So there's only a couple left. They've basically fallen back. As far as this turn goes, though, uh, turn two for Chaos, uh, I moved up my tanks. So this Plague Burst Crawler has moved up. The uh, Rhino has moved up as well, just standard moves. And the Pox Bringer has followed up because he does give plus one strength to the flamer of this tank, which is quite good. That's it for the screen there. As far as my characters go, Armin and the Demon Prince have moved behind the building to basically just spam smites on the drones and stay safely out of line of sight just in case things get a little bit crazy and my tanks get blown up and my screens are gone. It's very slim, but just being careful. Also, I want to make sure I can use my smites on his commander, uh, the Crisis Commander on the building here, and uh, hopefully get some value there. Now, as far as the heavy hitters go, we do, of course, have the uh, Plague Burst Crawler moving up here to contest the objective here with the Riptide. My hopes are, though, that I can kill the Riptide this turn with the Obliterators. So if you guys take a look, the Obliterators, the heavy metal Slanesh gun units have come in, and these guys are going to have an endless cacophony of firepower, hopefully into this Riptide taking it out. The Demon Prince of uh, Slanesh has moved over here within six inches of the, uh, the big gorilla uh, machine gun dudes over here, giving them rerolls. And also he has the option of flying up into the building and charging the drones as well as the uh, Crisis Commander. So some decent options. The Playcaster has moved up as well just to throw in his smite or maybe use the Putrescent or the uh, Fleshy Abundance to heal my tank. So we'll see how that goes. So that's pretty much it, guys, for the uh, movement. Uh, cultists stayed in the back of the building. We have our cultists over here in the corner. And as far as the back here goes, you can see that my Dark Apostle, who I forgot to do the prayer with. Uh, so we're just going to, yeah, we're just going to punish myself for that. Forgot the prayer. He's uh, holding the objective. And this is pretty much it for the backfield. So guys, now we'll be back with Psychic Phase in just a moment. Psychic phase is here for the forces of chaos. Firstly, we're going to begin with uh, Miasma Pestilence, giving minus one to hit to this tank right here. So here it comes. It does go off on an eight. Tau, of course, have no psychic denial, so now this tank is minus one to be hit. Over here, this Nurgle dude is going to cast Fleshy Abundance on this tank here. And let's see if it goes off. It does go off on a seven, which heals it for D3 wounds for three. So we get a three. The tank is now back up to eight, which is quite nice. So let's go ahead and adjust the Life totals here. Some uh, Nurgle sorcery is certainly making things a little bit scary for the people of the land. And now let's go ahead and go to this Terminator Sorcerer who is going to put Prescience onto the Oblitz. And it, this will go off. He gets a plus two to this because of the Familiar and the High Magister trait. So needing a five. And uh, he perils, but thankfully Thousand Sons have a really cool Warlord trait, which actually uh, it's like Adepts of the Warp or something. It's a new one from Psychic Awakening where I can pay one CP. So I'm going to go down to six to ignore the effect of apparels. So thankfully he doesn't, because he took one earlier, so basically he would potentially die here. So it does go off on a 12. Prescience is going off here. I'm down to six CP now, uh, using that sweet, sweet stratagem. And for his other spell, he's basically just gonna be smiting up into the crisis suit commander up here in the building, who is the closest target. So here it comes, smite needing a five, gets it on a seven, eight. So it's gonna be D3 into the commander for three. So the commander here is just not having a good time with that. This is from... Uh, from the Terminator oh, Searcher down below. Right. Next, we're going to open up with uh, the Demon Prince, who is actually probably closer to the drones, but he does have a targeted snipe ability. So yeah, he, he's probably closer he, to the He drone. is actually going to use Infernal Gaze on the commander, which can target whatever. So that does go off on a 9 with a plus 1 from his, uh, his arcane focus. Every 4 up is a mortal wound plus 1. So it's 3 in total against the Crisis Commander. Okay, so, so one, he's two. already going. He is deleted by the psychic power of the Thousand Suns. Brutal indeed. So next we're going to go ahead and cast a smite from the Demon Prince. I could use Gaze of Fate, but I feel like going balls deep here. So we're going to use a smite here onto the black top drones from the Demon Prince. Needing a five. 
I can't ignore it twice, so that is a perils. So as far as the perils damage goes, let's do that first. The Demon Prince will only take one. So he takes one, and he's down to seven wounds. And uh, now, though, it is D6 still, because it's Super Smite, so a big six. So the drones are actually going to take seven mortal wounds in total because of the devastating sorcery warlord trait. One, two, three, four. See, this could be on the Riptides, but uh, Ismail has played quite well in uh, screening my smites out. Let's see if they die, they die. So he made two sixes, ignoring those, but still failed five. So the drones... Uh, no, three, because they have five up. But oh, okay. They are done. So the blacktop drones are done. So Armin is done. The Terminator Sorcerer... Not Armin. The Demon Prince is done. Sorcerer here is done. And now it is time for Armin to unleash a salvo of fire. I believe he's closer to these drones right here than the ones up top on the building there. So Armin is basically just going to smite here. He's, he's doing it. He's smiting. Does go off on a seven. D3 for one. Only one this time. So it. Kills one of the orange top drones. And next he is going to cast... Uh, he's going to cast Doom Bolts on him. Hitting an eight. He does get that. So it's D3 for two. So two more onto the drones here. So one, one dies. One more dies. And next, he's going to cast his last spell, which is going to be Zinch's Firestorm. And that does not go off. So uh, as far as the spells go, we're all done with our witchcraft. Uh, the Demon Prince here uh, is going to put Delightful Agonies onto the Obliterators, just in case something ends up being able to shoot him with SMS. I want to make him very tough to kill. And it does go off in a 7. So the Oblitz now have a 5-up feel no pain until my next Psychic phase. So that concludes my Psychic, guys. We'll be back with shooting in just a moment. All right, guys, shooting is here. Uh, we have a little bit of shooting this time. So this tank just did a normal move here. So he's going to use his flamethrower and his heavy stubber onto uh, this bad boy here. And his mortar is going to go downtown with its 48 inch range and slam into that riptide on the far side. So we'll see how it goes. So here comes the flamer into the drones. 2d6 shots for only four this time. Nonetheless, let's grab some other dice. And this will be uh, strength. Uh, what's the toughness of the drones? Four. It should just be threes then. Threes re-rolling ones because it is a plague weapon. So only two onto the drones there at minus one. For a uh, invul save? Okay. And he makes them both, so he's good. So now it is time for the uh, heavy stubber. Heavy stubber uh, hits on fives because I moved. So two hits, threes, uh, two more at minus one. Four ups, takes one, five up feeling pain, one go. These drones are very, very sticky. Not quite able to finish it. The tank mortar is going to be D6 shots going downtown for four. And this is hitting on fives and no hits. So that tank is concluded. Now we're going to go straight on over to this tank here, which uh, unfortunately is just out of range of my Poxbringer. I couldn't get a good enough advance move and I wanted to get the objective, so such is life. So we're going to do the Flamers into the, uh, the Riptide here. This one did advance, so I cannot use the other weapons. Flamer for four, again, a little bit lackluster, but not going to complain. Uh, Rerolling ones. So one wound at minus one against the Riptide, which he has a two-up base save, right? Yeah, so he's good. He's good. So he takes that like an absolute champion, guys. And now, you know, that all the circus stuff is out of the way, it is time for the big Pumbaa shots. The obliterators winding up their guns. And let's go ahead and determine their profile. So I'm going to declare all three of the obliterators into the uh, the big old Riptide here. We're going to use one of our six CP going down to five using Veterans of the Long War, giving them plus one to wound. So now on a six, you should get your goodies back, right? What's that? Uh, I used a stratagem, so you can potentially get a CP back, right? Uh, no, because I you got, already did. Yeah, in my turn, so this is still the round. So the way Oblitz work is they get basically strength six plus D three, so their their profile is determined kind of randomly, which makes them very swingy. So let's do this. So the strength is going to be six plus D three, which is going to be uh, eight. So strength eight AP is an important one minus two, which is very respectable. Now the damage is the most important. It's a uh, one through three. So it's one, so I'm gonna go down to four CP using another one to reroll that because this is pretty important. Oh, and the rock hard three, baby. So that is D3, so the Oblitz are now three damage a piece. Things are about to get pretty crazy. So we're gonna put it up here. And now he has prepared 18 dice for us here. The Oblitz did get the Prescient, so they hit on twos, rerolling ones. Let's get all these dice. Hitting on twos. Rerolling the ones for the Demon Prince into another one there, that's fine. Now it's gonna be strength eight against toughness seven, correct? Yeah. So this will be normally threes, but in this case, it's gonna be uh, twos because of Veterans of the Long War. So six, so boom. This Riptide probably gonna be sleeping with the fish tonight. Yeah, those are looking pretty good there. 
That's a bad joke for Tom, man. They, 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 they are fish people. So it actually, it's pretty accurate. That was good. It was all he, an Italian joke plus a towel joke. He is, it's, it's accurate because he's going to sleep with the fish. So this is minus two. So you have four ups here. So let's roll over here on your side, actually. It's a little uh, bit. Four ups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times three. So it's 20. Uh, and there's 21. six, seven, eight. There's another three okay. here. So it's 24 damage in total to that Riptide from the Slanesha Blitz. But, uh, so I can spend one command point? Yes. To bring him back up on a three up? No, just kidding. I was like, what? You have a, a night strategy? <laughs> no, he's dead, he's dead. So the Riptide has fallen. The Slanesha Blitz doing their job. Honestly, I wanted to shoot twice, but there's really no other targets here for me except for a couple drones. So we'll see how that goes. So the guys, that's pretty much going to conclude the shooting phase. I'm not going to shoot twice. I thought, like, if you roll bad, if I had rolled, like, one or two damage, I would have had to shoot twice to yeah, kill it. Yeah. But the big rock hard three using the CP was enough. So, so far, uh, we've done some good work. And now, guys, we're going to go into the assault phase. Basically, the Demon Prince here is going to be flying up onto the building and trying to claw these drones. And we'll see how that goes. Actually, you know what? We could just do it right now. We're here. So uh, I'll just roll, and then we'll, we'll check the distance here. Could you check the Prince's distance to see what he needs to get from down here to, like, land right here? Uh, let's see. Kind of complicated here. Let's see. Just off the top of the crate. It looks like like a six or seven, maybe. Yeah, something like that. So we'll, we'll call it a, what do you want? What did it look I don't like know, to we'll you? Just roll. You might get a double one. So okay. a six. So you, wanna, you might want to double check that. I always got to make things complicated. I know, man. I'm sorry. No, I'm Why you got to uh, go and make things so complicated? So this would be like a one. Because you would have to go up and then like this, Sure, right? sure. Yeah. So let's see. Up. From this thing. I could CP it, but I, I'm like holding on to those precious CP. Four and a half plus one and a half. Uh, so we need to get past that pipe there. Yeah. Because this would be four and a half to get up to here. Plus yep. you need like a little. So probably like a yeah, seven then. Yeah. It would probably so the seven. demon prince shall fail. Although, oh no, wait. We're emperor's children. Duh. Oh, okay. So I can, I have four CP. That's enough for vets and concophony next turn, which is pretty much all I need. So we're going to use one of our four CP, yeah. going down to three, to use Honor the Prince. Honor the Dark Prince, which turns one of my dice rolls into a oh, six. Right. Yeah, so that would so basically, cool. I'm going to turn the, the, the two yeah. into a six, making it a ten inch charge. And the Demon Prince will fly up here with his big scary claws, yeah, and it is time for the business. Definitely. Not. That's such a cool stratagem uh, from the uh, Psychic Awakening. So as far as assaults go, um, is there anything else I want to do? I mean, the Rhino advanced up, so he couldn't have shot. I could assault your drones, which would be quite comedic. Uh, no, we're not going to do that. Okay. <laughs> so we're just going to go here. Seven, eight. So the Demon Prince gets seven attacks, plus uh, one for the uh, Hateful Assault. So this is going into the drones here. Let's get these out of the way here. So hitting on twos, rerolling ones, because he is a Prince of Chaos. And now it's going to be uh, Toughness seven. Or strength seven against toughness four, so yep. threes. So you have six at minus two. And it is two damage apiece. I don't know if that matters. So four up in will. So four fail. So first one dies. Second one dies. Because th these are two separate units. Oh, they are. No yeah, problem. No problem. Either, yeah. yeah, not, not so an which issue. Which ones did you. Oh, just the closest the one. one. Yeah, I couldn't have gotten both anyway. So we're just trying to get kill more. Uh, and then from there. We will uh, just chill out. I mean, I could consolidate, but I'm trying to keep my distance from all of the shooting. So we're going to kind of hang tight. So that is it, guys. And now we'll be back with a turn summary for Chaos here. And uh, we'll see you guys at the uh, Tau turn coming up soon. Sorry, guys. Quick amendment. We have to do leadership on the drones here. So let's go ahead and roll that here. See. So they lost four. They should be fine. Yeah, two and four, six. They have leadership. So, six. so we're all good. No other leadership on the battlefield. And we'll be back in the uh, next turn here. All right, guys. Summary of turn two. You guys take a look here. Uh, at my score on, here on the left, I did kill one and killed more. I killed four units. I killed two drone units as commander plus the Riptide. I'm also holding more. I have the objective here with the Nurglings in the building. I have the one behind here. And since the Riptide did fall, that is no longer contested. Therefore, giving me the bonus and the third uh, of the uh, hold mores. So basically, I killed more. I held more. I got the bonus objective. I got my second mark for death for killing a Riptide here. I got my second recon. And I did not get any old schools. Uh, Warlord, Linebreaker, and Last Strike are uh, hopefully to come. And for his turn, he killed one and held one, and he did also get the double recon for having two units at the end of his turn in each of the deployment zone, or each table quarter. He got a second King of the Hill, and he also did get his mark for death killing the Noisebrains. So currently, as the score stands, it's 5-15 to 
a nine it looks like. So certainly doable for the Tau. They're gonna have to have some really good shooting here, but uh, currently Chaos is up by a couple points. So we'll see you guys in uh, Tau movement in just a moment. All right guys, movement completed for the Tau on turn three as far as this objective goes. The Tau have opted to relinquish it. So my obliterators after uh, flattening that uh, Riptide here, just hanging out with the uh, Plague Burst Crawler. But the Tau have kind of moved their, uh, their kind of pack away from this general area. So you can see all these shield drones have moved away. I believe they're still getting King of the Hill though, right? Because they're within nine of the center. Yeah, these two, as long as two units are within nine. So, so these, you're golden. Because you can see the uh, drones are in different units. They're color coded on the top. So there's a blue, a red, and there's like a beige one over here. Uh, as far as his other units go, the characters have fallen back into the building to hold the objective, making it very difficult for my Demon Prince to catch them. He basically has to like do a long charge if he wants to like fly down and just get a little bit crazy. Uh, the Riptides have moved up a little bit, looking to uh, just kind of blast some of my troops in the face. I think he's probably going to go after the Crawler or the Rhino, we're not sure, but they have moved up. They have pretty uh, ample uh, drone support, so even if I do shoot them with tools in the next turn, it's going to be tough to bring them down because the drones are within three inches, providing that nice support bubble. Over here, the commander's back here hanging out in the Ethereal, who has taken a couple wounds from Smite. Uh, and I think, no, actually, some of the sniping psychic spells yeah, earlier. Yeah, you sniped the hell out. I think she took three. Uh, she's hanging out up there in the building. That's pretty much it. So uh, as far as chaos goes, you can see the same old business. We're just hanging out behind the buildings, and all the Zinch witchcraft is here behind the tanks. And now I think it's about time to go into the Tau shooting phase. And also, for the record, they have Nova Charge to both of those guys, and Sense of Stone, of course, is activated once again, giving them a six-up field no pain. All right, guys, back in the Tau shooting phase. Ismail is going to be opening up using uh, the marker lights from these little dudes right here. You can see there's a couple of them with their little marker lights. And they're going to go into the tank, which currently is minus one to be hit with my oh, Asmode Pestilence. Oh, this guy's minus one? Yes. God, God, God. So you can shoot the Rhino if you want, an easier kill. Um, the other tank on the far side does not have it. But, yeah, but he's too far. And he also has more wounds left. He and was healed up with Fleshy Abundance from the Poxbringer here. Yeah, so uh, I guess this tank is just really... It's got to pay the troll toll. It's really annoying. Um, just thinking about it here. We can take a quick break here while he uh, decides. All right, guys, we're back. And marker lights are going to be targeting the crawler or the rhino? No, so uh, these three marker lights are going to be targeting uh, the rhino. Okay, let's do it. So we'll go ahead and roll over here if you could, right behind my rhino. So we'll start with the first one. Hits. That's uh, it. Actually, no, I moved. I moved with these guys, so they hit on fours because it's a heavy weapon. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so this guy will target the rhino, hit it on fours. Okay. That so is a hit. Has one marker so you line. get to reroll ones against the rhino. Yeah. Um, the other marker is basically wasted because a two does not. It doesn't really help you. Any, yeah, it doesn't give me any. You want to try and put useful, it on the crawler just in case? Useful bonus. Uh, yeah, why not? But it, it's going to be hitting on fives. So it hits. So yeah, both the rhinos, both my tanks here are lit up. Okay, so now really, we have Riptide shooting. It's, it's a weak flashlight. I mean, they're not they're really... They're just like, they got like a, yeah. Maybe it's like a little, you know, those laser pointers or something? Like the cheap ones you buy yeah, at the yeah. store that like the battery dies after like yeah, 10 minutes. Exactly. Out. The ethereal just flying all over the place. Yeah, he's actually underneath. He's on the bottom floor, copy yeah, that. Yeah, he's barbecuing down there. Yeah, he's having, having fun. Uh, okay. So let's start with uh, this Riptide. We'll target the... The rhino. Sounds good, brother. So the rhino's toughness seven, has 10 wounds, no feel, no pain, no invuln. And the, sorry, uh, the SMS will go into the cultists. So I do have a group of battered cultists here. Uh, I'll, so I'll start with those first. Let's do it. Does have five wounds. Just watch these all miss and the cultists rejoice and bless. Yeah, that's actually probably what's gonna happen. No, maybe not. Four go through. Okay. And then wounding on threes, so. Wow. <laughs> one wound again with SMS. So one dies. One cultist will fall. And now the heavy shots. I can't ask for much better. Slanesh be praised. They can continue their party with the Nurglings here. The Beauty and the Beast. Oh my god, I don't, I don't want to know what that looks like. Yeah, it's kind of a weird mix. Like Nurgle and Slanesh. Although, I don't know. They, they... I, hate, I think they hate each other. I can't remember. I think Nurgle and Slanesh hate each other and Korn and... Well, Korn, I think, doesn't like Nur Nurgle. I no, think... Korn doesn't like the... Uh, I, I have no idea, Zinch. actually. That makes sense. Yeah, he hates the magic. Because That's he his hates whole thing. magic. And Nurgle and Slanesh don't like each other because Nurgle is dirty as shit and Slanesh <laughs> is kind He's of... He's like, yeah, yeah, the opposite, yeah. right? The twisted perfection. Exactly. So these are the burst cannon shots going into the Rhino. Yeah. So fours, re-rolling ones. There's one one there, I see. Oh, God, I forgot the minus again. Do you want to go ahead and do that retroactively? I don't care. Yeah, so just basically in the shooting phase, I... Select an enemy unit visible. 
to yeah, the character, so and every six to wound is, is minus an extra AP. Okay, so. perfect. So it'll be five to wound here. Five to wound, and sixes are an extra AP. So you have three sixes. And then two, three fives. So, so we'll do the sixes, yeah, which will be... Yeah, those are minus three, so that's going to be a six up. Six ups. We pass one, so, so we take four, four. And then these are going to be five up. And then these will be... How many were it? Three. And these are five ups for the other save. So we take uh, six damage, so the rhino dies. Oh, wow, wow. And does it blow up on a six? It does not on a one. So the rhino will be pulled. Fine work, my friend. And now, what would you like to shoot with with the other riptide? So the other riptide will fire the SMS into the uh, cultists. You're never going to get them, dude. Just to break that party right there. Oh, Crash dude, ruining the, pu ruining the fun. Fours and then threes. So three. So three cultists just die instantly. That will probably oh, be it. Man. Unless I roll really hot in leadership. Oh, right, because you still have the leadership. Right? I do. Um, okay, so the last riptide will... The burst see. cannon. Yeah, I'm thinking if I should give it reroll wounds, but on that guy hit. I mean, it can't hurt. But I will be hitting on fives, rerolling ones, rerolling wounds. I mean, it could do something with the heavy burst can. It could. Yeah. Oh no, but I already uh, shot my SMS into them. Right? Yes. Yeah, so uh, I should have declared it uh, before that. Yeah, time. it's okay, easy mistake to no, make no, it's first. Okay. Yeah, it's okay, I'll, I'll remember it next time. Three, six, it's all just uh, normal. Sounds good. So the Riptide shots from the second, uh, the burst cannon on the second Riptide is going to be going to the crawler. So hitting on fives here. And rerolling ones because I did hit with one marker light with this guy. My dice out of your way. Uh, rerolling ones. So hitting on fives. It's really hard when the hit modifiers against tower are super good. Yeah. So now it's going to be fives again. Yeah, it's horrible. Plague Burst Crawlers are incredibly good against tower. I'll reroll this one. Okay. So it's four. Four at minus uh, two. Minus two. So we pass two, fail two, so, so it's four damage. Four damage. Now feel no pains. And we take three. So we're down to four. Well, uh, that's green. So is there any other shooting left? I think your commander character, does he have anything? Uh, no, he's just there for buffs. The drones can actually frisbee themselves into a unit. All right, test your mic real quick since you just plugged it back in. Testing, testing. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's it for me. All right, so that's going to conclude the Tau shooting phase. They've taken uh, taken out my Rhino and also have taken some wounds off the Crawler. So at least they did get a kill here. And uh, they probably will be able to get a mark for death, and they have pretty ample screening. So we're going to see what kind of damage I can do. Uh, again, he's pretty well screened against my Spites and things like that, and my Oblitz are a little bit out of position to put much pressure on. So guys, we'll be back with uh, the Chaos Movement. Here in a second and of course uh, as far as secondaries go i do not believe you get recon this turn no i don't i just get king of the hill you get king of the hill for having the guys over the and hill here the mark for death on the guy on the uh oh no sorry no mark for death. no mark for death here yeah because no it's the crawlers yeah, it's and the, the crawlers. Oblitz. all right guys we'll be back with chaos movement completed in just a second cultist leadership always forget this here we go uh yeah good night sweet prince that is another kill for ishmael all right guys we'll be back in a second all right guys movement is completed for the forces of chaos this Plague Burst Crawler has abandoned the objective and has moved up here to now start pressuring the drones. As far as the Oblitz go, they did advance up. They, one of them got around the bend and you can kind of see some drones. But what's cool about Oblitz is they do have assault weapons, which means I can advance and shoot them at a minus one penalty. So I'm basically going to be trying to bank on the fact that I have Armin within nine inches to cast Warp Time on them. Warp Time would allow me to move like right down this alley and then draw a line of sight on some of the bigger threats here. So I'm really kind of banking on that and we'll see if it works out. On top of that, we have moved the, uh, what is this guy? Yes, the Demon Prince of Zeech has flown up in the building here, and he's in the smite range. He's also being screened by the Nurglings on the bottom floor of this building, so he's going to be doing some smites and also some targeted DPS spells here against the uh, Thousand Suns, or not Thousand Suns, against the Tau. The other tank has pretty much stayed put. It's just going to be using its flamer and trying to get some work. Nurglings are holding the objective back here, and on the other side of the building, if we take a look, uh, you can see we do have the Dark Apostle, who did give the minus one to hit prayer to the uh, Demon Prince. I forgot to mention that at the beginning of the uh, battle round here. And uh, Poxbringer is here, just kind of following in suit. Psychers have rotated away because my screen over there is very fickle. I have a four wound Plague Burst Crawler, and I'm coming up and around to get behind this Crawler and support the Obliterators as they move in. Currently, I'm holding more. He has killed uh, a couple units last round. He killed the Cultists, the Tank, and maybe one more, but he has at least two. So I'm going to be trying to match that 
And guys, we'll be back with Psychic Phase in just All right, guys, Psychic Phase here for the Forces of Chaos. We're going to open up here with the Demon Prince, who's going to be casting Delightful Agonies on the Oblitz in case they get shot. I want them to be a little bit tougher to kill. Delightful Agonies does not go off on a 4, and I'm not going to be using a CP. It actually goes off on a 5. Next, we have Warp Time from Armin going off on the Oblitz. This one's pretty important. I would have liked to have used the uh, Sorcerer who would get plus 2 to cast. Armin gets plus 1, but we're going to do it here. Warp Time goes off on a 7 and an 8, so it does go off, so the Oblitz will be able to move up once more. And again, I'll do that after the Psychic Phase is completed. Uh, so next, what do we have? We have uh, Armin's pretty much done. That's his only buff, really. The other character is going to... Uh, well, unfortunately, I did something out of sequence here. I should have cast Prescience first. That was my plan. Uh, but again, I, I Warp Time them first, so I'm going to just take the punishment for that and suffer. Uh, now we have some Psychic Smiting, or it's a Sniping, I guess I should say. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go to the Plague Burst, or the Plague character on the far side, and he's going to attempt to cast Miasma Pestilence on the tank again. And it does go off on an 8 when the card is already there, so quite conven uh, convenient. This guy here uh, can just barely see the edge of the tank, it looks like, with his bony finger. But let's go ahead and check right there. Uh, that actually looks like he can't, so no, there's not going to be any healing on this tank here. And for the last set of spells, we do have the Demon Prince, who has some targeted smites. Now, Ishmael has, uh, Ishmael has hidden the uh, Ethereal down to the first floor, so I can't really snipe him out, even though it's on the top. It's just so you guys know it's there. So, one of the Riptides is quite beat up. The other one is relatively healthy. You have ample drone support. It looks like this one on the back here has less drone support, so we're actually going to use an Infernal Gaze on him first. And it does go off on an 8. Now, this will do uh, 4 ups, do Mortals plus 1. So, 2 Mortal Wounds on the far Riptide. And six up invuln here. Nope. And no, so that reply takes two and goes, he's taken seven in total, I think. Yeah. And then next, that demon prince is going to use, we'll just use a gaze of fate. I mean, I could smite. We'll actually smite. We'll smite the uh, blue drones down here. And we get a super smite, which we will uh, take. So D3 on the prince. So the prince has taken three so far. I keep losing his, uh, his dice, so he's down to five. He took one earlier, but it is going to be D6 on the blue drones. Plus one, so seven mortal wounds to those drones down there. Jesus. That's a lot. Let me roll them here. Uh, yeah, so that's... Ah, uh -huh, we got a kill. So we wipe out the blue squad. A major victory here for the forces of chaos as those two drones fall. That's pretty much it for Psychic. Uh, we kind of positioned ourselves in a way that wasn't super optimal, but I'm basically just trying to be safe behind the screen because... I can't tell you how many games have been overly greedy with those type of plays and just got my characters blasted, and that's how you lose with a Thousand Suns. All right, guys, so now we're going to move the Oblitz off camera uh, because of the warp time, and we'll be back with the uh, shooting in just a moment. All right, guys, we're back in the shooting phase. We're going to open with this Plague Burst Crawler. He's going to use this Flamer into the uh, the drone squad here, so the three black drones. So here it goes. 2d6 auto hits for four. Once again, that's what he's rolled pretty much every time. Uh, heavy Cyber will go into them, and Mortar will... I just can't really shoot anything. So uh, we have... Two. Uh, Rerolling ones, because it's a plague weapon. So two at minus uh, one, but doesn't really care. We're up safe, okay. The drones are good. Heavy Stubber will be hitting on uh, Bracketed, so the six is hit. And threes, one more. Uh, takes it. Just one damage. Good. The drones are good, so so far, very, very resilient little creatures. Now we're going to walk on over to this side of the battlefield where, let me go ahead and grab some green dice here, guys, and we'll be back in just a second. All right, guys, back. This other uh, Plague Burst Crawler is going to be shooting into the red squad here. So uh, here we go. So two shots, he advanced, so this is all he can do. So it's going to be eight here, so do I have enough? Wait, which squad is this? We're one? shooting the red squad here, yes. This, these? Oh, this this one, the, the two more. Two guys, okay. Yeah, just the two guys. I'm just trying to get more, kill more. Yeah. And then rerolling ones, because they're plague weapons. So you have uh, seven wounds at minus one. Let's see, four, five, six, seven. Uh, four up invul save. And five up two more pain. Okay, so they've gone. So we killed those two drones, so so far we've killed two. And now it's time for the grand finale. Uh, well, not really the finale, but we're going to be shooting the Oblitz, who were able to waddle into range with the support of Warp Time. Uh, we're going to be shooting, we can't reach the one that we'd like to shoot there in the far corner, but we're basically just going to be unleashing a salvo of fire onto the... Uh, I mean, probably shooting the drones off first is a smarter play. And then, is that one big drone unit? There's one of six here. Yeah, one, two, no, seven. Seven. And then three. Yeah. yeah, they're all colored. See, they're because then we just have to get easy wound rolls against them, which is probably better. So we're going to open up with our first salvo shooting from these Slanesh blessed obliterators down here, 
and they're going to be opening up into the uh, drones and I'm going to be activating Veterans of the Long War, putting me down to 2 CP. So don't you have your farming system? My the Tau, Tau, Tau farming? Great, efficient farming. It's gotten system. you 2 CP back so far, dude. Yeah, yeah, you laugh true. at it, but you know it's, it's, it's doing its yeah, thing. Yeah, usually it gets me zero, but... It's, it's <laughs> Today's pretty good. All right, so I'll get the dice, and the Oblitz are going to be shooting into that big drone unit. All right, guys, back in the shooting phase. Uh, and the reason I'm not shooting the Riptide, some of you guys may be wondering, is because... If I shoot the Riptide, he passes all the wounds off to the drones, but then I also have to do my wound rolls against the toughness of the Riptide. Whereas in this case, I have to do my wound rolls against the toughness of the, uh, of the drones. So that's kind of my school of thought. So the strength of the Oblitz is going to be uh, strength nine. Okay, that's pretty good. And the AP is going to be, sorry, I'm just trying to manage a lot of dice, minus three. Which doesn't matter. It doesn't matter against drones, nor does the damage. Well, the damage does, actually. Oh, because they have the feel no pain. Because one damage is going to be just feel no pain. So I rolled one damage, but I'm not going to use the CP. So I'd like to shoot twice with my other CP. So here we hit on fours because we did advance. Uh, we get to reroll ones. Uh, let's pull this out. That's actually a pretty good roll. Just uh, there's a two there. Then reroll that. It's a miss. So this looks to be all the hits. And now we're going to be doing the wounding, which will be twos because of vets. Ooh, buddy. So here's all your wounds on the drones. So I get a uh, four up save, invul save, wow. And then a five up fumo pain. So you uh, lose four. Four drones die. Pretty good. So now, while we're here, uh, I am going to now just go in and try and damage one of the big riptides. So I'm gonna use my last two CP I have over there. And I'm going to shoot the Oblitz again with the endless laughter of Slanesh, the endless cacophony hey, let me do my, uh, of the Tau Farmer. My farming system, no. No, that unfortunately did not pay off. So we're going to shoot the Riptide that only has one wound on it. We're out of 24 inch range of the big one, which I could probably potentially kill here. But uh, alas, we can't have everything in life. So strength is going to be nine. AP minus one. Ugh. Damage is more important. Oh, damage one. Curse the Baggins. It's the nature of a blitz. I'm out of CP anyway, so I couldn't do anything about that. So this is going into the Riptide here. Thank you, brother. And we'll be hitting on fours, reeling ones. Get those ones out here. So the only ones. It's a pretty good roll. It's a pretty darn good roll, actually. Hopefully it's not too bright. I'm working on the lighting, guys, to try and get it a little bit easier for you guys to see, but it is what it is. So strength nine against toughness seven, and with a plus one modifier from Veterans of the Long War, it'll be twos, which is the good part. So this is against the Riptide, okay. and there's all your wounds. And this is only one damage, right? It's one damage and it's minus one. So, so I'll just take it on the Riptide, I guess. Okay. That doesn't sound that bad. Famous last words. I really want to keep the drones alive. So uh, three up save. Oh, so you three. only passed two, much and, better than earlier. Uh, the, <laughs> the Sense of Stone. Yeah, so, so six basically up. it's an active, it activates in the movement phase. Sure. It's not like an aura where you have to be all Sounds within good. six. So. Six up, no. So two wounds off the uh, Riptide here, so. Three. Sorry about the garbage truck outside, guys. Now, as far as the uh, assault situation goes, I mean, I could assault with my tank and try and bump the Riptides, but they can fall back and shoot. So not really too much point in doing that. Uh, Demon Prince here is hanging out. This guy's hanging out. Like, really not too many good situations to assault. So on that note, let's go ahead and do leadership on those drones right here. Yep. So they lost uh, four. They're out of the Ethereal's... Uh, leadership bubble so let's see they're fine so their leadership four, six. six so they're fine so uh as far as the turn goes we killed a couple units but we're going to be back with the turn summary here in a moment not a terribly explosive turn but we certainly uh you know did our piece and we're out of cp now tau of course still have four so we'll see how this game evolves all right guys turn summary for the end of turn three uh we killed the same so he killed the rhino and the cultist and i killed two groups of two drones so we get to kill i uh, kill the same there on top of that, uh, I do hold more. So I was able to hold three objectives. I have this one right here. I have the one behind the building and the one in the back building against his one, which is being held here. But the Demon Prince is coming for that booty. So we'll see how long that lasts. Uh, on top of that, for secondaries, uh, I did get my recon, my next recon. I did not get a mark for death because the two Riptides are still alive. So as far as secondaries, I just got one. Uh, he did get a King of the Hill that turn, but he did not get a mark for death or a recon as well. So pretty neutral turn, very, very close. Uh, I just got the uh, hold more, but aside from that, it was pretty much uh, the same. And I also got the bonus, which is quite helpful. So now, guys, we're going to be going into Tau movement phase, turn four. Movement phase completed here for the Tau on uh, turn four, actually. So we're making some pretty good progress. And basically, the Tau is seeing a massive kind of uh, influx of uh, chaos forces here. The obliterators coming around the bend, the psychers. 
the Demon Prince of Zinch up on the roof here. Nurglings, well, they're just in the building laughing. So, uh, yeah, they're going to be moving away, which is smart. So he's moved over this direction to the, uh, well, it would be, I guess, the left or the right of the tank. But basically, he's moving the uh, big riptides away from my oncoming force. Probably going to be blasting the tank, trying to get his mark for death. And then from here, he has a pretty long alley to shoot down to uh, waste the obliterators. And I'm out of CP, and when oblits don't have CP to kind of fund their firepower, they get quite a bit weaker. So that's pretty much it. The Tau have moved over here with their main force. See Ethereal staying on the second floor. He has used one CP to make use a stratagem to allow the Riptide, which is very damaged here with seven wounds, to uh, fire at full capacity. And also he has his characters here basically just holding this. They're going to be sacrificed to a Slanesh Demon next turn, no big problem, but uh, they're just getting him a hold one this turn, because uh, again, you need to hold at least one objective to get that. So that seems to be his mission. So that's pretty much it. And now we're going to go right into the shooting phase. It gets much quicker as the armies get smaller. So what would you like to shoot first, my friend? So I'll go ahead and uh, shoot one marker light into the obliterators. So the marker light coming from the blue man group over there. Hits. I'm blue, I'm bloody, I'm lit up. Okay, so they're lit up. Yep, they are lit up. Very good. So we'll uh, we'll just put one of these yellow dice to kind of indicate that for now. Uh, he will also mark the obliterators with his uh, you know warlord trait in order to give all sixes an extra AP. Very good. All sixes to wound. Uh, the second. Uh, marksman will also target the obliterators. Hits on a three because he did not move. Very good. So two marker lights yep. on them. The third one will also do the same, hitting on threes. Okay, three marker lights. Then I'll spend one command point. For the uplink marker yeah, light. Yeah, let's see if I get it back on a six. No. Let's see how many. So this adds an additional D3, it's right? It's D3 plus one. D3 plus one. So. Instead of this marker light, it's D3 plus one. Oh, okay. Very cool. So it's only one. Uh, plus one, right? So two. So two marks. So it goes up to five. No, uh, not up to five, because instead of... Oh. Yeah. Okay, so they're up to four well, then? just double check it, but I'm pretty sure... Yeah, I don't know Tau, so you'll have it to do, It doesn't this. add it. It's like instead of mm. that hit, it becomes... Let's see. Checking this real quick. Yeah, okay. instead of only one, you add D3 plus one. Okay. So they had two, and so instead of the third one, I would add D3 plus one. So that would bump it up. Okay, so uh, that was your third marker light that was, attempt? Yeah, so that would bump it up. So you got four, four. marker lights okay. there. But I really do need five. So do you have any more to, to do? That. Uh, so you could I CP spend, that. Yeah, uh, I could CP that, but I'd rather spend one command point for another stratagem, which is a new stratagem. From yeah, it just basically Awakening. adds another one, right? So basically you consider the marker lights as... Plus one. Plus one, so that would be five. So for the sake of this, all five marker lights, these obliterators are literally these giant lit up Slanesh beasts and... Uh, Oh, let's see if I get that one back. Does he get the CP back from his farming, his Nero chip? No, he does not. And now it's time to shoot. Yep. Where would you like to shoot first? The Riptides? So the commander, the I'll spend my last command point. Ooh. And have... Let's see. Big plays. Is it my last command point? No. Oh, he gets it back. Man, this guy's paying dues this game. Yeah, it is. He's paying the so tax, So basically, man. this Riptide will reroll all wounds as well. Great. So let's start with him, and he will shoot everything into the obliterators. Let's do it. So roll it on over here if you could, in this general Six, area. Nine, twelve, eighteen 12. 18 shots from the Nova 15, Charge. 18 plus 8, 4. Okay, so the the blue dice are the uh, SMS. All right. All at the oblitz. So hitting on threes and re-rolling ones. So it's going to re-roll the ones because the marker light, having the first marker light tier, does give you access to that juicy, juicy re-roll. And now he's coming in, just picking out the misses and all that kind of stuff, doing his rerolls. Looks pretty good. Okay, so now these are going to be wounded. Well, it's a toughness five. Uh, T five. So, so threes. Yeah, threes and fours. Threes so, on the yellow dice. But they all get rerolls. You get just a ton of rerolls here because they are lit up. Uh, these are our fours. And remember, sixes do additional AP, correct? Right. Thank you. I always forget that. I'm, just, I'm looking out for you, man. I'm trying my best okay. here. So we got uh, a couple sixes, actually. Three sixes. Set those apart. And then two sixes, and then these are all. Those are all wounds as well. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, do you care? The, which yeah, one would you like me the, to do first? The two damage ones first. So we'll do these ones first? Yeah, so these are AP minus three, actually, and these are minus two. But okay. you have a nimble save, right? I do. So the AP five. minus three will put me up to a five up save. All right, okay. Which we pass two, fail one, so that's two damage, correct? Yeah. So the Oblitz take only two from that volley of the 
big negative six ones because they made two of the five up invulns. Wait, don't they have the fuel no pain? Oh, and they do have the fuel no pain. See, we're helping each other. Right? Yeah. This, is, this is teamwork here. Uh, so here comes the fuel no pain, and he oh, takes them both because they do have delight flag, and he's from my right. last psychic phase. Now these are minus two, correct? Yeah, these are minus. So that'll be a four up save. Wow, that's pretty good because they do have Terminator armor. So I've passed all those. So that is going to be a total of six damage. Yep. So we'll uh, do the green dice because they're a little bit easier for the camera to see. You guys can let me know, of course. Uh, for the field, no pain. So we take four. So that kills one oblit and takes two wounds off another one. And the face plan of the gods. Down he goes. And then you got two more at minus uh, three. So these are five ups and that's a mess. We pass one fail, one one damage. Yeah. Five up, feel no pain. And that's a three. So the oblit has uh, taken three. So he's got one wound left. So the first riptide. The second riptide will shoot his heavy burst cannon into them, but his SMS are out of range. Mm. So I guess those will target um, your creepy crawler right now. He's going to target the creepy crawler if we zoom in. Yeah. See the plague burst crawler just all up in his face? Yeah. The killing the blitz here definitely is a good play because they can put some serious firepower yeah, into those three, guys. 3, 6, 9, 10, 14, 18. Our friend here gathering the dice. Here we go. So let's take the twos out. Rerolling ones. Rerolls the ones. One converts, one does not. And these will be wounded on threes. Threes. And sixes are... Sixes are something. Yep. So one six, which is going to be a five up. We fail that, so that's two damage, correct? Yep. Uh, so the feel no pain. Sorry, we'll get the feel no pain dice. And it kills the one. Down he goes with the glorious face plant. And now we have four ups on these. Yeah. Hiya! Wow. And they all, all but one, we passed. And we take one off that. So the Oblit has taken one. His two buddies are flatlined there, but uh, you know, he's, he's going strong for his Slanesh. So the SMS on the creepy crawler. These will be hitting on five. Right? Five's because of my asthma pestilence. And then wounding on fives. So one at minus two. One at minus two against the tank. So he fails it, one damage. And we fail the feel no pain. So that tank, if you could put it down to three for me, that'd be much appreciated. And now what else do you have for shooting, my friend? Uh, that's it. So as far as the phase go, uh, he killed two Oblitz. I'm going to go ahead and check the Obliterator's leadership because uh, I can't quite remember. It doesn't come into play terribly often. And uh, we'll be back in just a moment with uh, Chaos after that. I'm assuming, yep. uh, you know, yeah, fast leadership and all that. All right, guys, so obliterators are leadership eight. I lost two, so even if I rolled a six, they couldn't fail. So the last oblit will uh, stand the test of time. And now Ishmael has uh, opted to actually go after my Plague Burst Crawler. So he's going to be using his Crawler, uh, or actually using his Riptide to charge into my Crawler to try and keep it from killing the drones next turn. So uh, that's the game plan. So Overwatch yep. is going to be decent here. So Flamer is going to be seven shots. So six and seven. And now... Uh, I'm a little bit beat up, not quite at my final bracket, so uh, it'll be I'm down to six. But you still hit the flamer auto hit. Right? Yeah, no, I'm thinking of the wounding though. So basically, the uh, pox bringer gives him plus one to strength. He's bracketed down from seven to six and back up to seven, so it should be fours. Uh, Rerolling ones. So you have uh, six wounds at minus one. Pretty good uh, Overwatch from the tank. Three up. So but I take one. He only takes one. Uh, sense of stone. So I take one. And now the heavy stubbers will shoot as well. Uh, nothing. So only one wound on the big riptide, and he will proudly charge into that uh, that tank. And we'll uh, do some Tau close quarters combat. Not something you see terribly often, but well, that's... the elusive rare. Uh, you know, what is it? What is the? I'm totally blanking right now. What is the? Not not the Yeti, but Bigfoot. It's like Bigfoot. You never see it. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, so combat now. So he's going to be, uh, I, <laughs> what is it? What are they? Nobody oh, no, knows. He, he does, he's not bracketed this turn because they use the strategy. You did. So he hits on fives. Two hits. Uh, yeah, two hits. And he's strength. Oh, uh, is it fives even with so the modifier, fives. right? So you'd hit it on fours normally in close quarters? No, I hit on fives in close quarters. So my asthma pestilence is for melee combat as well. Oh, okay. So I don't think there were any. There was no sixes. Yeah. So, uh, my tank will fight back. I believe those two attacks. It misses. All right. So that's it. Uh, we'll go ahead and come back with Chaos. As far as the turn goes, uh, did you kill anything this turn? I don't think so. The Obliterator uh, just narrowly no. lived. Yeah. He's so no kills, but he certainly did some damage. Pretty close to getting marked for death. So next turn, he can probably finish off the Oblit. 
and uh, potentially finish off the tank, which will rack him up to uh, March for Death. So guys, we'll be back with Chaos in just a second, with movement phase completed, and uh, it's go time. Movement phase completed for the Chaos uh, here in turn four. This tank has moved up from this part of the battlefield, so I basically just left a, a haggard Nurgle Poxbringer there to hold that objective. The Obliterator has fallen back to that table quarter uh, to give me uh, recon and also stay out of line of sight, trying to keep him alive and deny a kill point. The Zinch Prince has gone down from the building top and is basically getting ready to unleash a salvo of psychic onslaught here, and Armin is following in suit. So Armin was able to fly over and land here with a pretty decent advance roll. The Terminator Sorcerer has gone back and around this bend of the building to drop a smite on pretty much whatever you can see. Nurglings are on the bottom floor holding that objective, and uh, on the back of the building we do have the Dark Apostle, who just gave the prayer to himself since nobody else was in range, so he's just kind of a loner. But he's basically holding the objective behind the building. So that's it for movement, and uh, honestly it's pretty... Uh, you know, pretty straightforward here. We're going to go right into Psychic. So firstly, this uh, Slanesh Demon Prince. How many wounds do these little characters have in here, by the way? They have uh, five wounds, I believe. Let me oh, check. okay. They're pretty tanky then. So he is going to put Delightful Agonies on himself, needing a five, and it does go off. So currently, this Demon Prince does have a five up, feel no pain. Let me check, though. Next, we're going to go ahead and go with the uh, Demon Prince here. So this Riptide has taken set eight wounds. Or how many wounds has this Riptide taken? Eight wounds. Taken eight, and the other, other one in the back is taken four. So we're going to use the Infernal Gaze to uh, try and snipe him right now. So let's go ahead and do that. hi -ya. You know what? I could have done Astral Blast. It's all right. It's too late. It's the new spell from the Cult of Magic. It's actually pretty good against what, uh, what we're dealing with here, but it's okay. We can do that for his next spell. So uh, this is going to go off. So four ups here are going to be Mortal Wounds against that Riptide, plus one. So basically two Mortal Wounds to that Riptide that has taken eight. And did you fail both those? Yeah. Okay, so he's taken 10. How many does he have left? Four. So next, we're going to go ahead and use the Astral Blast, which is the new spell. And I need to actually go ahead and check and see if this is something that can target the Riptide. But can you measure and see how far my Demon Prince is from your Riptide, the Zinch Prince? Uh, let's see. He's about 13. 13? Yeah. All right, perfect. So we're going to check the range on the spell, and we'll be right back. So next, guys, we are going to be using the new spell from the Cult of Magic, the Astral Blast, which has a 9-inch range plus 6 from the Thousand Suns. Now, this has to target the nearest unit, so we are going to be targeting the drones here. And this goes off on a 6. Obviously, we do have uh, the plus 1 from the, uh, from the Arcane Focus, so that does go off. And now, yes, uh, so plus 1 there. It's going to do D3 to the drones in the front, so to that uh, kind of maroon unit. And it does one plus one from the Devastating Sorcery. So, that's two, so two in total. And a three and... They both... Uh, it's these drones. Right? Yeah, so it's just uh, two in total. And now what it does is each unit within three inches also takes a mortal wound. Oh, so okay. the uh, shield... Automatically or... Yeah, automatically here. So these guys take a mortal wound, they do, and so does the Riptide. Okay, the Riptide... Uh, okay, so these up. guys on a five up... They're good. The Riptide uh, gets a six up, feel no pain. Misses. And then the little uh, marker light dudes. Uh, yeah, so they actually just take a wound. Okay. Because they, they, uh, they were too far from Sensor Stone. No problem. So next we're going to open up with Ariman. Ari man. He is going to be using Zinch's Firestorm on the Riptide there. So here it comes. Needing a 7. And we fail that. And next he's going to do Doombolt onto the... Let me actually make sure that's his spell. I always... Get all these Psychic sun, Psychic Suns, Thousand Suns, Treachery mixed up. So Doom Bolt is his other spell he does have. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Hiya! Uh, 7, 8, it fails by 1, unfortunately. We have no CP. Uh, for his next magic trick, he's going to go ahead and do Smite into the uh, last of the Maroon drones there, which is unfortunate. It does go off, and it's going to be uh, D3, so 3 mortal wounds into that last red drone. At least it'll get us a kill for the turn. Yep. So the drone does fall. Armin and the Zinch Prince are done. Next we have uh, Homeboy's out of range to do the Fleshy Abundance. We're going to do Mazma Pestilence. I don't believe we've done it yet this turn. So uh, Apparels, which we'll take. He takes one and then a five up Feel No Pain on the Nurgle Poxbringer. So the Nurgle Poxbringer does take one mortal wound. We're going to mark him up here. And it does go off. So Mazma Pestilence is off on that crawler once again. Uh, the last of the Psychic Spells this turn are going to be uh, here. So I believe the nearest unit is the little marker light dude here. What is, so I need to go see what that Terminator can actually see. I know he can see the Riptide, 
but it depends if he can see the marker light, guys, because it's smite is the closest visible. So I'm going to pause, guys, and we'll be back in just a second. All right, guys, so pretty cool stuff, actually. So smite is the uh, closest visible unit. And since there's this barrier in the way here, the sorcerer actually can't see these guys. The only thing he can see and is the closest is the riptide. So it's pretty good. So he gets plus two to this cast for high magister and familiar. And he gets a seven, eight, nine, which is going to be D3. So two more against the riptide. We'll see what happens here. Takes both. Takes both. So he has uh, 11, 2, 13. So, so he has one wound left. One wound left. I'll and as far as other spells a, go... I'll put a one. We don't have anything else I can really reach. That sorcerer has warp time and he has prescience, neither of which are useful here. So a bit of a doomed scenario. So unfortunately, the riptide will live with one wound for now. And we're going to go straight into shooting since it's somewhat uneventful. So here we do, of course, have the Plague Burst Crawler. Oh, you're in, we're in combat, though. Yeah, this one right here. The oh, one, sorry. The one in front yeah, of the, the Zinch Prince. Yeah. And he doesn't have two. He had a six here, I believe. Yeah, he has, a, he has eight wounds. Yeah, he had eight wounds left. So we're going to use his Flamer and just see if we can chip the last wound off your big guy. So yeah. Flamer, uh, and that's it since he advanced. So hi -ya! It's going to be four shots. And it's going to be strength seven against us. So, uh, so okay. fours, rearling ones. So two wounds at minus one. Would you like to pass them to the drones? Uh, yeah. I would assume so. He's going to pass him to the black shield runs there. So on two up. Oh no, and he gets two ones. Oh no. But he makes it. Oh, yeah. and he makes the saves. What it's a hero. It's minus one, right? It's minus yeah. one, so he lives. That was a... Yeah, that would have sucked really bad. Though. That was a really stressful moment for you, that I would imagine. Been, yeah, that would have been bad. So uh, that's pretty much it for shooting. Since we advanced, we can't do much else. The Oblit fell back. And honestly, we can go straight into combat. So we're going to go in with the Slanesh Demon Prince. I'm going to declare pretty much all these characters here. and uh, Okay, so they do get three shots each on Overwatch. Oh, no. And they will all be Overwatching. Don't do it, bro. You need to calm down. Hitting on sixes, though. Okay. Uh, four, four hits. Strength five. Uh, it's against toughness, six. So it'll be uh, five for you. So it's going to be three at minus nothing. Throw three ups. We fail one. How much damage? One. Just one. Then a five up, feel no pain, and we take one. So the Slanesh Demon Prince, first blood is drawn on him. And now he's pretty much guaranteed to get in there and karate chop. So explain to me, are they all the same character? Yeah, no, no, what do you mean? Yeah, yeah, they're all uh, Kadra Fire Blades. They all have five wounds. Uh, charge, we get a five inch charge. Yeah, so they're good anyways. So just to be safe and make sure, uh, we're gonna put all the attacks into one, I guess. Six, seven, and eight. So twos, hi -ya! Re rolling ones, it's a fail. And then toughness, two, uh, three, so twos. So you have uh, five at minus two against your fire blades. I believe they have a four up. Six. Four up invuln, huh? No, not invuln. Sorry, four up. Mm, save. So just go to a six yeah. up. Yeah, they do have four up. The demon prince of Slanesh tearing uh, them so limb it's four, from limb. You said? Five. Five. So six up save. So that definitely kills one. See, just enough to kill one though. So if we had split, he might well, have. Well, no, lived. it's two damage, right? Yeah, but if I had split like the claws, one claw on each guy. Yeah, that would have been a little dangerous. Yeah. All right. Perfect. So um, now. You get to fight back with your two guys. Wow. You ready for this this Tau? Fish attack. They have hooves, don't they? They can hoof me. Just get their, their hooves and just karate kick the demon prince. They're probably going to bite you or something. Yeah, well, then, I mean, fish aren't known for their... Unless they're like piranhas. Is like, that like piranha sept? I wish. <laughs> you see, three attacks. But they do hit on three as well. Okay, that's, that's pretty good. Bad. So six attacks total. Sorry, guys. I know I'm blocking the lighting a little bit. And they are strength three, obviously, so six is, I guess. One. One goes through. Three up. We fail it. Five up, feel no pain, and we Taking take it. Taking embarrassing wounds. Oh, dude, wound from embarrassing wounds from the towel. All right, so that is going to be the end of the turn. So, guys, we'll be back with a score summary here in just a moment. All right, guys, turn summary here at the end of turn four. I was able to kill more, hold more, and get the bonus against just his one hold because he was not able to kill the Oblitz. Really unfortunate stuff there, so... Five to one on primaries that turn. I did get my last recon, but no mark for death because the Riptide did survive with one wound and no old school yet because that's first strike, last strike, warlord, and line breaker, which you get generally towards the end of the game. As far as his secondaries go, uh, nothing really there. Uh, he's got three king of the hill, two recons, one mark for death. So just a summary of the points. We got five, 10, 14, 19, 21, 25, 26 for chaos to two, four, six, seven, eight, 10, 13 for the Tau as we go into uh, turn five, Tau movement phase. All right, guys, uh, turn or movement summary here for the uh, Tau. Of course, the uh, forces of chaos cornering them here, but they're falling back and they're gonna continue to shoot. 
Did you use the CP to fire at full capacity with your injured one? Yeah, the last CP, yeah. So that Riptide in the back has one wound left. The yeah. other one has taken five. Ethereal's on the bottom floor. And the drones, which were out in the open uh, currently, have gone underground here to basically hide from my firepower and deny me kills. And he set up a nice little screen here with these little uh, marker light dudes. So he didn't overcharge the one that was relatively healthy. And now we can basically just go into shooting. So what would you like to open up with? So I'll start with uh, the, this marker light will target uh, this tank here. Okay. Hitting on uh, four because he moved. So he does hit. So marker light on the tank. So this guy's lit. Let's roll over here. It's a little bit better lit, if you don't mind. Tank has eight wounds left. The other tank is rocking a mighty three. But that he has um, my asthma, right? The other one does the have my asthma. one, yeah. So these two will target him actually one at a time. Okay. Uh, so. He moved, so five up hits. So the tank is lit up as well. So re-rolling ones against both tanks. Yeah. Uh, and that's it, really. I do not. Um, okay. And the other one will fire his pulse pistol into it. Let's do it, dude. Just, Let's go just big. Just because. But he misses. Misses. Right um, next to okay. point blank, too. So first Riptide. Which one would you like to shoot first? I will shoot the one with the 18 shots. All right. So only the one Nova charge because the other one only has uh, one wound left. So had he yeah. done that, it would have been destruction. So he will uh, shoot everything into um, the three wound PBC. Yeah, no, actually he'll shoot everything into that. Guy. Okay, going into the eight wound PBC that does not have the hit modifier. So going to be going all in, obviously minus one to hit very good against Tau. So. Oh yeah, because that one has minus one. Yeah, no, actually I'll go into that one then. Going into the, the more injured one. Right, Only six, has three left. Eight, nine. Gathering up the dice here. Preparing for the final stand of the Tau. Will the greater good claw its way back? Perhaps so. Most likely not. And that's the master going in there as well, correct? Yeah. Okay. So he on, uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. Did you want to do your commander thing to give it extra AP? Uh, yes, I do. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So hitting on fives, right? Yes, yeah. fives, correct. Unless he's like bracketed or something, but he's healthy. No, so. he's and re-rolling ones. Correct for the marker light. Here it comes, the re-rolls, because there's a little flashlight lighting up this giant disgusting tank. And those are the hits. So now the yellows will be wounding on fives, and the they're other ones all on they're all on fives. Yeah. yeah. Sixes are extra AP though. Not that it matters because the tank has an invuln save. Yeah. So. Um, uh, so just three. So just three. So we'll do the two damage weapons first. Yeah. Five up invuln. We passed both. Oh my god, that's so disgusting. That's very Nurgle. And the last one, the one damage weapon, just add salt to the wound. It does go through, and uh, we take it. So the tank is down to two. So one wound taken off the tank. Where would the Riptide with twelve shots like to shoot? Uh, he will shoot his big shots into this tank. And uh, I guess the SMS just, will just also, going in, yeah. dude. Cause going for gold. Going for broke. And we'll see how if he's able to get the wounds. Pretty uh, lucky saves on my part. Probably should have died. That's the nature of uh, dice games. Rerolls here. Sorry if the light is blaring on some of the dice. We're working on the lighting here as we do uh, do more battle reports. And then fives here. So two of the big Papa guns. All you need is one of these. So five up here. We fail both. So that's four damage. And then we'll just do this now too. And we fail that. So five damage in total. We'll uh, take five of your dice here, if you don't mind. And five up, feel no pains. And the tank does go kaboom. Does it blow? And it does not. So the Plague Burst Crawler does fall. That will get Ismail uh, marked for death. And uh, is there anything else in the Tau shooting phase? Nope. So that is it, guys. We'll be back with Chaos Movement, and uh, of course, then after that, the turn summary. And uh, we'll be back in just a moment. Right, guys. Movement completed for Chaos here in, uh, this is turn five, right? Yeah. yeah. Turn five. So, uh, getting pretty ballsy here with the Zinch Prince. Basically, this uh, this Riptide back here has one wound, so my uh, Poxbringer, who was hiding behind the gas tank here, ran up and around looking to smite the last wound off that, uh, that big boy. So we'll see if that works out. And then assuming that's done, I think the Zinch Prince, although he has taken five wounds, so the Zinch Prince is a little bit beat up, I'm hoping that he can survive the Overwatch fire and maybe get in there and finish it. It's a little bit scary, but I figure we need some theatrics to finish this out. Uh, Armin back here is basically just in position to smite and lend some support. My Terminator Sorcerer is hiding behind the box, so he actually cannot see the support characters. Therefore, his smite will be going into the big target, which is uh, some uh, tricky, tricky stuff. 
There are links in the building. We are maxed out on recon, so basically we just need to get marked for death, last strike, all that good stuff, and uh, we'll try and make it happen. So we're gonna go straight into Psychic here. So firstly, we are going to use Armin Smite, and he's just gonna be smiting. Actually, no, we're gonna do the Nurgle character smite in the back, needing a five, and it does go off on a nine, doing D3 to the Riptide for just one. So don't you have a feel no pain from yep. Sense of Stone? Got just pick a dice. Here, use this one. Okay. My, my Nurgle blessed dice. No. Uh, and he does not make it. Not the drama uh, is, not, is very blessed. Not, not very dramatic. That Riptide will fall. So currently uh, there's just one Riptide that does give me a mark for death. So now Armin is going to go ahead and smite here. He is going to just smite these uh, support characters here. He gets it on a 10, doing D3. So doing one mortal wound to the characters right here, these guys. It would be this one right this here. Guy? Yeah. They have three wounds, right? Yeah. Next, he's going to do Zinch's Firestorm onto the big machine back there. It is a targetable spell. It does go off on a 7, so we get 9 dice here. That's 6, 7, 8, 9. And every 6 does a Mortal Wound. So actually, 2 Mortal Wounds to the Riptide. Tons of Stone. And he gets a 4 and a 5 and does not make those. So he's taken what looks to be 7 so far. Uh, Armin does have Doombolt as well, so he's going to Doombolt that guy. And Doombolt does not go off on a 6, uh, plus 1 and a 7. So next we're going to do an Infernal Gaze from the Zinch Prince into the uh, big Riptide there. <sighs> Barrels. So he takes another two. So he's down to three wounds left. Ouch. All right, so he has a smite as well. Uh, we're going to smite the nearest target, which unfortunately is this guy. I wasn't able to get far enough. And it does go off, so it's going to do D3 plus one. So it'll just kill that character. So uh, next we're going to go ahead. Armin did Smite, Doombolt, and Firestorm. This guy did his two spells. Uh, we'll do a Delight Flagonies in here, giving him a 5-up Feel No Pain, which does go off. So currently this guy has a 5-up Feel No Pain. The Slanesh Prince, and now this Terminator Sorcerer is going to smite downtown onto the big Riptide. It goes off, and it does one. All right, so he's taken eight. Oh, man, this is so scary now, because I, I only have three wounds left on this guy. I was planning some big epic charge. Uh, and the Poxbringer did advance in the back to get closer to that one, so I can't charge with him to eat the Overwatch. Anyways, so now the Psychic Phase is basically done. This guy back here is out of range of anything pertinent. Uh, so we're going to go into Shooting, where this tank is going to use its uh, Flamer here just to go after the, uh, the screening character. So, and uh, then we'll do the Heavy Stubber and the Mortar. Uh, can you make sure I'm not within 12 inches of you with the tank? Yeah, because sure. the mortar has a minimum range. I'm pretty sure you're out. I think I'm out, but I just want to play. Yeah, it. you're out. So flamer there, heavy stubber and mortar into the riptide. So flamer is going to be six shots. And what's the toughness of this little marker light guy? Uh, he's like three. So uh, it'll be twos, re rolling ones. So it's five at minus one. He has like a six up now. So he has okay. a five up, so probably a six, six up here. Uh, and it's five. Okay, he's dead. He's toasteroo, roasted by the Nurgle love. And now, guys, we uh, Heavy Stubbers hitting on not that. Mortar, six shots, hitting on fives, because I did kind of scooch forward a little bit. Uh, one hit, strength eight against toughness seven of the Riptide, rerolling ones, because it's a plague weapon. And one wound at minus two against Riptide. See. And he passes it, no problem. So shooting, uh, Armin does have his bolt pistol, but he actually advanced up. Demon Prince, I don't really have any other shooting. So now, guys, we're going to go straight into the Assault here. And uh, we'll... This is so sketchy. I think we have to do it. We're you, at this point. You, we're going have in. To we're do, going in. Do, Demon Prince of good. Zinch is just going to eat all this Overwatch to the face. Good call, man. But you're not tau sept, so it'll yeah, be sixes. His, yeah, but still. And the Nova Charge lasts the battle round, correct? Yeah. So he's going to get 18 shots, unfortunately. Yep. But big plays from the Zinch Prince. I'm going to be trying to charge in there and finish him off. We're pretty far up on points, so it's not too much of a risk. But uh, it still obviously isn't fun losing such a character, but... Here we go. Oh no, there's some hits in there. Four hits and force the wound. So. Ah, dude. That's enough to kill him. It is. So it's minus fail, two. Saying, yeah, minus Z each demon princess have a four up in bone. Yeah. A three, a three, and a, oh, and he's dead. He gets blown. You, you don't have a. No, I have no CP. Pain. Oh, the perils killed us. So good night, Z each prince. It was a bold play, buddy, but you did really good. We're proud of you. All right, so uh, now we have combat over here, basically. 
Yeah, uh, are you gonna... Yeah, I'll charge him, because you, you fell back, so... Right. Yeah, the charge is basically guaranteed, so... Uh, can I still overwatch? Yeah, you can overwatch, yeah, because you fell back, it's just... We forgot to move so it, so... one hit, one wound. Okay, one wound. Minus nothing. Uh, we take it. That guy keeps taking Five up field net pain. Oh, he takes it. So he is down to four left. All right, so now uh, we're gonna charge in. Charge distance, obviously, is eight, it's good enough. We're gonna put all our attacks into another one here, so five, six. Seven and eight, hitting on twos. We rolled the ones. One's always going to ones. It's the nature of Warhammer 40k. And uh, twos, so five at minus two. Yeah, he's pretty much dead. So we kill another one of those characters. And uh, that is going to conclude the turn. So we'll be back with the turn summary. Uh, we didn't quite get the Riptide. We'll probably be able to get it next turn potentially, but uh, we may just call the game here depending on the score. We'll talk it over here in a minute, but uh, we're pretty far ahead, and I'm not sure if the uh, Tau can come back. So, guys, we'll be back with the turn summary here in a moment, and uh, talk to you soon. All right, guys, so that is the end of turn five. Uh, the score, after all is said and done, is 34 for the Forces of Chaos, 14 for the Tau. And we decided to call it at that point because it was pretty much over. It would just be basically chasing the Riptide into the corner and uh, doing that kind of business there. So uh, the end score ended up being 34-14. Primaries were 24 for Chaos. And, uh, and then another 10 in secondaries there. And then uh, for the Tau, uh, it looks like it was 14 in total. So it looks like as far as primaries go, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So it looks good. So well played, my friend. Let's go in for the, the awkward left-handed handshake. And just switch every hand you feel like doing. All right, cheers, man. We'll certainly have him back. And also, guys, for future, uh, future battle reports, if there's other armies you guys want to see, I have a lot of friends in the league I play in who play different armies. So we could probably get them in and have them face each other while I just do some commentary and camera work. So let me know what armies you guys would like to see. And of course, coming up soon, I will be doing a pure Death Guard battle report. But uh, yeah, all in due time. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed. You can see the forces of chaos around the battlefield just kind of cackling on the runes, doing all that sort of stuff. Also, if you guys have any feedback on terrain or lighting or uh, camera work, again, that is always appreciated. So thank you guys so much. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure to do so. It helps me out quite a bit. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for now. So thank you guys so much for watching this ITC Battle Report. We'll see you guys back soon. Cheers.